A former girlfriend of John of the Majors filed a lawsuit accusing the Marvel actor of physically and emotionally abusing her, filing a false complaint against her, and launching a public campaign to defame her. This is... Um, not, not the one in the original suit. It is. It is? Yeah, so Majors in December was found guilty... How does that happen? ...of misdemeanor counts of assault and harassment stemming from the altercation in which ex-girlfriend Grace Jabari said she sustained multiple injuries in a civil lawsuit. All right. Jabari accused Majors of subjecting her to a history of domestic abuse and publicly casting I her f- as a liar. So it's that I forgot that was a criminal. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah. All so, right. so she's going after it this way. Yeah, the suit cites an ABC interview after the December verdict in which Majors denied hitting her and a subsequent news article in which Majors' attorney compares the case to that of <laughs> Emmett Till. The Emma black, what? Uh, yeah, the yeah. black teenager whose murder helped spark the civil rights movement. He's countersuing her for not realizing he's a great man. The lawsuit alleges that Majors statements along with providing a false account of to, uh, to police in which he accused her of abuse resulted in public harassment and death threats against her. She is seeking compensatory and punitive damages. Uh, her, uh, His lawyer, uh, Priya Chaudhry, uh, said this is no surprise. Mr. Majors is prepping counterclaims against Ms. Jabari. Uh, last month, uh, the New York Times reported that another former girlfriend had accused him of emotionally and physically abusing her, and that a third also said that he had emotionally abused her. So I don't know if there will be any cases that come from that stuff. I don't know. Or not. We'll see. I'm getting the heavy stuff out of the way at the beginning here, okay? An apologetic and at times emotional Dan Schneider has broke his silence after viewing Investigation Discovery's Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, which is a four-part docuseries that made claims about toxic workplaces for child actors and crews on Nickelodeon series that he created and ran. Steve, you've been talking about I watched this. two episodes last night. Finally okay. got to see it. And uh, so it, it is interesting. He is obviously the Darth Vader of this series. Uh, there are other people surrounding um, him, though, who are actually were, were like uh, collecting child pornography and things of that nature. And I was telling Casey, it's not like he um, there was sexual assault, but he was very... Um, controlling, uh, very mercurial, um, and there were some uh, sexualizing of of the uh, the actresses that worked under him and uncomfortable relationships. Mm-hmm. But he wasn't; he's not like a Harvey Weinstein figure right. in this, right? Uh, by the way, he is. If you've ever seen Better Off Dead, he's the guy who plays Ricky. We play yeah. that clip all the time, right, Ricky? <laughs> Uh, that is... Uh, right, Ricky. You know, Mark Summers is, uh, appears a couple of times briefly. Okay. And they show him a clip of... Uh, of um, so they have a c- couple of clips of Ariana Grande where she's trying to squeeze the juice out of a potato. Yeah. And it looks very phallic. Okay. She, Come on, give, give me the juice. Give me the juice. And uh, Summers is looking at the video that they've handed him. He goes, this ran on Nickelodeon? <laughs> right. So Dan Schneider said in, in a video that he put together, a 19-minute video, uh, and, and it's commenting on this, this special. He said, watching over the past two nights was very difficult. Me facing my past behaviors, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret, I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. Among the allegations uh, were, uh, of course, he was once called the Norman Lear of child, uh, children's television, Schneider, uh, in the New York Times, uh, he, they included uh, that he tolerated toxic workplace conditions and that he allegedly tormented and humiliated the cast and crews of his set. He said, when I watched the show, I could, meaning this documentary, yeah, yeah. Uh, this four-part series, when I watched the show, I could see the hurt in some people's eyes and it made me feel awful and regretful and sorry. And I wish I could go back, especially to those early years of my career and bring the growth and the experience that I have now and just do a better job and never, ever feel like it was okay to be an a-hole to anyone ever. So there are other people who are actually accused of of molesting. Yes. And that's uh, like Drake Bell's. Um, yeah. yeah that, so I've, go I've, I've got some of the details. That guy's name was Peck. Uh, Schneider, in part, responded to claims about sexualized content and toxic onset behavior by saying that Everything that uh, happened on the shows, uh, Dan ran, was carefully scrutinized by dozens of involved adults and approved by the network, meaning Dan Peck, this guy. Right. Uh, so Drake Bell, him, or no, I'm sorry, Brian Peck. Sorry about that. All right. So uh, Drake Bell named himself as the John Doe victim in the Brian Peck sexual assault case. Schneider, in the new video, claims he didn't hire this guy, the Nickelodeon dialogue coach, who was convicted of sexually assaulting uh, the actor in 2004. 
uh, Bell's name was never used, revealed in open court. He said, when Drake and I talked and he told me about what happened, I was more devastated by that than anything that ever happened to me in my career thus far. And I told him I'm here for you. At one point, uh, he teared up, recounting when Bell's mother came to him to help write a speech to read before the court at Peck's trial. So he actually helped out with that. Um, while no sexual allegations involving child actors have been made against Schneider, he made several apologies in the video for young actors who said they felt uncomfortable or vulnerable on his TV sets. He said there are definitely things I would do differently. Uh, uh, he insisted, including having licensed therapists on set oversee child actors and the filming process. He said the main thing that I would change is how I treat people and everyone. I definitely at times didn't give people the best of me. I didn't show enough patience. I could be cocky and definitively over ambitious and sometimes just straight up rude and obnoxious. And I'm sorry that I ever was. So, he so was he's a jerk. He, he, well, yeah. And yeah. he's on uh, oh. that really, uh, he, is he is assessing and addressing everything that he is accused of in the series. So maybe he can make his way back for it. The other individuals, though, there was sexual right. molestation. Yeah. Uh, and that that is, uh, but the general vibe of it being this toxic, the funny thing is uh, 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 Double Dare was sort of a separate. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. That, that wasn't, the, these were the scripted uh, and variety kid shows. Right. And, and uh, you guys would probably know more of these people than, than I did watching it. I knew some of them, yeah. like Ariana Grande and uh, uh, Victoria Justice. Is that her name? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I, I knew a couple of those people. but Miranda Crossgro right, Crossgrove. Right. And yeah, there were a bunch of them. So so a lot of a lot of the ones that we know who've already voiced their uh, issues with how they were treated yeah. are in this uh, the docuseries. I got to see this. Yeah. I definitely it's on need ID. to see it. You can, it, it's ready for on demand. If you just say it into the remote, it'll pop right up. Okay. Yeah. It's on max. I think is uh, yeah. where it's streaming. No, so if only that worked on my stupid, uh, I finally television. got mine to work. Just, yeah, just, I don't know how it happened, but it works now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It should pop right up just in the, in the general catalog of, yeah. Okay. Okay. But anyway, this, this article is extensive. It goes yeah, on and yeah. on and on. So uh, we don't have time to go through all that stuff, but yeah, that might be, if you were, especially of that era, uh, you may want to you may want to check this. There's out. an actress who starts at Preston. I don't know what show she was from, but she says if you if you love those memories, don't watch this. <laughs> no, wow. kidding. yeah, yeah, it'll ruin them for you. Wow. All right, on to better stuff. Uh, Timothy Chalamet is now the new king of the box office. Uh, Chalamet has become the first actor after John Travolta to have two top grossing films in eight months since the record was made over four decades ago. Uh, his most recent films, Wonka and Dune Part Two, in which he plays the leading roles, are the only two films to have surpassed the domestic 200 million total mm. since last July. The last actor to achieve this feat was John Travolta Whoa. in the 1970s for his films Saturday Night, F Night Fever and Grease, which were released eight months apart between 1977 and 1978. So, are you officially a Shalomite? Yeah, yeah, I'm way on board with and, him. And you, so, I and, because I, you guys know, you've heard me geek yeah. out about Dune. I loved Wonka too. I thought it was fun. I think it, I think it's solid. Yeah, yeah I, I think it, it's um, it's a different movie it than is. Gene Wilder. Yep. Yeah, I thought it was fun. I thought the music was good. I thought he was a good singer and yeah. he's likable. Yeah, and he's so pretty. He's a good oh looking fella. <laughs> Uh, he, is, he is next set to portray Bob Dylan in the upcoming biopic about the singer-songwriter. On Sunday, he was pictured dressed in character as a young Bob uh, during filming Bob. in New York City as he walked with a guitar in hand in the street. So, yeah, he's on fire right now. So is, is he beautiful and not hot? Like, is he, if you were to I, categorize... I would, say, I would say beautiful. I, I think a Bradley Cooper would be hot. I right. remember uh, uh, my friends used to assess when this, this was 30 years ago that... Uh, Johnny Depp was very pretty. Yeah. I was going to use pretty, the word pretty, pretty for, boy for yeah. him. Pretty boy. I think uh, sometimes Chalamet. it has to do with their eyes. And yeah. his uh, his left eye is lower than his right eye. You guys ever noticed that? Eyes. <laughs> yeah, he's got a little, it's going to kill it for him. <laughs> he's got a little droop thing going on. But it 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 looks um, pretty boy. seductive. Yeah. You know? So, I don't know. But, I'd like to lie in bed with him. Uh, you know, we could cuddle. Yeah. You, you and Josh Brolin spoon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Kate Middleton was spotted at a farm shop. I assume that's like a, you know, a farmer's market over the weekend because this is in the UK. Uh, it was her first appearance in months. And as the internet analyzes the footage from the appearance, body language experts are doing their thing. Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah. So body language expert Judy James notes that uh, Kate walks ahead of William taking large enough strides to suggest no hint of any ongoing frailty. <laughs> While William keeps his face partially hidden under his cap and his head lowered, Kate's body language here suggests a desire to be seen. 
Uh, she goes on to say, this is quite extraordinary body language behavior for a leading royal out incognito in public. Yeah. And it suggests the point is, quite naturally, being made in terms of reassuring fans and quashing all the toxic rumors. When she talked, though, it did not sound like her. <laughs> so. Uh, Judy also says that Kate has a cheek-rounded smile that seems to signal she is completely upbeat and cheerful. She um, she wowed the uh, the photogs. She uh, fired uh, ping pong balls out of her private parts. No, and they were catching them. She's really? Yeah, yeah. Really? It That's didn't seem like a very Kate Middleton thing, and that raised some suspicion. Watch this. <laughs> Would you, you boys <laughs> like ping pong balls? <laughs> then step back. Uh, meanwhile, they scrutinize everything more about them than than our paparazzi <laughs> does about our stars. Well, right? They are, they are legendary, and they have been for years. It used to be that uh, okay. I mean, we're kind of on a par right now because we have this very predatory, um, you know. Uh, uh, online presence and all that stuff, but uh, with her and with the British press, they've always been known to hack phones, to um, to be very they're aggressive. Brutal. Yeah, yeah, brutal. Yeah, yeah there I, are people whose full-time job is to cover the royal to family. Fo is to follow them. But Just I mean, so. like, the fact that they're like, well, she was walking slightly ahead of him. And, right, right, you know, right. here we're like, they were walking together in the grocery store. Yep. Do you guys know the theories that's going on with her right now? Oh, yeah. They it, think, like, she's dead. Yeah, it's, it's a Paul McCartney thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but it. Uh, I, that's I, why. That's why they're I tend to think not. Oh, okay. I love it. I, I, I didn't see. I didn't see that she's dead. I thing. didn't either. Yeah. No. And, well, it's a, that same. That she went in for some sort of surgery and passed away. And right. then now this is a. This is a. Uh, um, a stand in. A, a, yeah, a stand in. So there's a Mother's Day photo that <laughs> she, I buried Kate. That she quote unquote released last week, and they're uh, analyzing the Photoshop of it of whether the kids are actually like it's a real photo. Yeah, we talked right, about we that. Talked about that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, with the hand contorted. So, yeah, yeah, and then the, she's not wearing her wedding ring and things like that. So um, yeah, there's all sorts of theories that she has either left or she's dead. Or and she, well, this is how, things. but you got This is how they sell sell stuff. Yeah. This is how they you get people you know clicking on it. And I mean, she they say in the recent picture she appears to be six six. Which I think is kind of weird. Yeah. I mean, why would they, um, why would they hide her death unless she was murdered or something? Like <laughs> you remember, I remember the Preston. You remember the Paul McCartney thing? Sure. And that happened. Yeah. And and you know what? It was kind of fun. And you look at the album cover and you'd say, and and I don't know. Did you? I don't know how deeply you got into it. Was that was an arc? Did they consciously orchestrate that? No. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's just uh, the people. It's it's conspiracy theories yeah. uh, type of stuff. If people look deeply into something, they can find something interesting How, or bizarre. So, what about the actual recording of "I Buried Paul"? Mm -hmm. What what was that about? He was he's not saying "I buried Paul." He says "cranberry sauce." Oh, at the end of it, it's "strawberry field." So he's playing off of that, and and it's uh, John going "cranberry sauce." Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't yep. know that either. Yeah. We could listen to it if you want you to. You learn sometime. stuff. Uh, so they were just playing around and people yeah. thought, heard what they thought they heard and, and uh, they ran with it like that. So, yeah, it was, it was interesting. All right. Uh, on to another story. This is great. Uh, billionaire philanthropist and author Mackenzie Scott, ex of Jeff Bezos, announced yesterday she is giving away $640 million dollars to 361 small nonprofits that responded to an open call for applications. What is she worth now? She, it was a 50-50 split, right? Yeah, billions, obviously. It's, like, it's of, like a billion. Lots and lots of billions. But so she is uh, yields giving, uh, yield givings. First round of donations is more than double what Scott had initially pledged to give away through the application process. Why don't we sign up for this and create the Preston and Steve Fire Truck Fund? Uh, since she began giving away billions in 2018, like billion. Scott and her team have researched and selected organizations without an application process and provided them with large, unrestricted gifts. That's pretty uh, cool. In a brief note on her website, she wrote that she was grateful to Lever for Change, uh, the organization that managed to open uh, the open call and the evaluators for their roles in creating a pathway to support people working with to improve access foundational resources in their community. So, um, yeah, some 6,300 nonprofits applied for the $1 million grants when applications open. And some of them, I think 80, uh, 279 of them uh, that received top scores from an external review panel got $2 million that's, that's each. That's awesome. And 82 organizations uh, got a $1 million each. We should start an ecumen ecumenical, like a like a, like a a Peace Corps thing and yeah. call it No Sad Bro. Oh, no Sad like Bro that. Global. 
I like that. Right? I think maybe she might want to donate there $2 we go. million. Dollars and then we just keep like the money. Uh, she has given away, just given away, $16.5 billion to charity. Yeah. This woman is incredible. Listen, yeah. I'd love to if I had it, but I, I'm a little shy. Uh, yeah. Well, she still owns 4% of uh, stake in Amazon. So wow. she's making, despite the divorce and uh, Steve, as of January 2024, she's worth $40.6 billion. This is somebody who's wow. got their head on straight. They realize that they will never, ever, ever need all of that insanely vast fortune, and they're doing what they should be doing with it, and they're helping other people out. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So she is going to buy 100 gorillas. Uh, and yeah. why not? Yeah. And that's a drop in the bucket, man. <laughs> yeah. oh, How much yeah. do you think that costs? 100, 100, 100 gorillas? gorillas? I don't yeah. know. What is, the, what is the market value? What is what is gorilla going Ooh, for? A couple grand pound. each for yeah. a gorilla? Something What's a like pound that? of gorilla? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Like, what would you pay for a gorilla? If right, you you guys, like, yeah, what's right. it going to take to put you in a gorilla? You guys think about that. I got a couple Let more Talk to the man, and we're running out of time. Okay. Travis Kelsey is reportedly in discussions with Amazon Prime Video to host a celebrity-focused reboot of the game show. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Preston, we have a word on that gorilla price. <laughs> uh, Connor called up the amount. It could be anywhere from fifteen thousand to forty thousand for a baby gorilla. Thank you. Back to you. Okay, so we're talking about four million bucks for a hundred gorillas. Okay, something like that. That's you know, if you have that's 40 actually billion. good. If you got billions, yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, so the show, originally hosted by Jeff Fox, where they will now feature celebrity guests instead of children. The original show aired on Fox before moving to syndication and then to Nickelodeon, we are just talking about. Uh, Kelsey would not be the first athlete to host a game show following in the footsteps of Michael Strand and Peyton Manning. Producers may hope to leverage Kelsey's connection to Taylor Swift to attract new, <laughs> new viewers who may not typically be football fans. Aren't they looking at, I was reading like a $100 million contract for the podcast? Oh my God! Yeah, I believe be on the on for the, the new heights. Yeah, for a wow. hundred million dollar, like a Spotify exclusivity thing or something like that. But yeah, God. they're looking at a fat contract for Good that. For I pitched yeah, uh, seriously. I pitched Kelsey a podcast idea in uh, 2017 or 2018, yeah. and um, yeah, I've been thinking about that. <laughs> he owes you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. clearly. Yeah, he owes you. Wow, I could buy so many gorillas. Yeah. All right, last story. Uh, we I, uh, we can offer a hundred gorillas. <laughs> Last story. I don't know why they're doing this, but a new live-action Popeye movie yeah. is in development. Uh, with oh my God! Wait, I'm Kathy, so excited. You, you why are you guys? Why Kathy don't you was, like this? Is it Malta? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 That was the set of the original movie, that, the Robin Williams movie. So it's in development with screenwriter Michael uh, Cleo, who did, who was on The Sopranos. Okay. But I also and loved, Sexy Beast. I also loved Popeye. Did, did you? you? Yes. Oh. I love Popeye and Olive Casey oil. and I in unison. Did you? Yes. Wait, no, the movie or the cartoon? <laughs> the cartoon. I liked the movie. I didn't oh. think it was terrible. No, the um, cartoon. Then I agree. I enjoyed I the, the cartoon. cartoon. It was a yeah. lot of fun. The movie actually has a few moments. It was okay, yeah. But here's the deal. I, uh, why now? Why? The cartoon why? is so dated. At it, least when they did it back in 1980, it you made sense. Still, you could still find the show on television then. It'd be right. like doing a Betty Boop movie now. Yeah. It doesn't I make any sense. <laughs> uh, man, we're finding out things you love yeah. and hate on this show today. It, it's, it's, love press, it's like a two hundred million dollar Steamboat Willie movie. Yeah, it, it's dated now. Yeah. So it, this uh, guy Michael Kaleo you mentioned, Preston, uh, he also wrote a movie that Kathy hates, Sexy Beast. Oh, with uh, J uh, uh, oh, no, I don't know it, Sir Ben, ben Kingsley. Kingsley. Yeah. Oh, no, like, that wasn't the Ben. I don't think no, that was the one that I. Fogs. That was. Yes. I didn't hate okay. it. I just wanted to die afterwards because yeah. uh, it's so depressing. Uh, the one of the most depressing movies ever made. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. I'm talking about Popeye. No, <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, but with Popeye, the problem is is none of the kids will be into it. They don't know who he is. They I don't know what he's saying. So yeah. There's no, there, and even uh, I think people who were into it are like, ah, do I want to drop money to go see this in a, in a theater? Yeah, yeah. yeah the original, I think what they're, they're probably keying off, like, maybe they're, they're, they have a little bit of Barbie euphoria and they think anything will work. It says in the story, while the original film received uh, mixed reviews initially, it has since gained a cult following. Uh, yeah, oh. the Manson cult. Uh, Popeye <laughs> celebrated his 95th anniversary this year and appearing... Uh, if, after appearing in the 1929 comic Thimble Theater, uh, the character has been the inspiration for various animated feature series and even fashion collections. By the way, was there ever any explanation? <clears throat> was Popeye in possession of two fully functional eyes? Because he did have the, like... I don't think so. Um, I don't know if, he ever, if they ever showed him opening both of his eyes right. or not. I gotta guess they did, but that's a good question. All right, we have clips to play. 
Yeah. X-Men 97 picks up right off where the animated series left off in 1997. I used to love that show. With your favorite superheroes forging ahead after the death of Professor X. In this clip, Lenore Zahn, who voices Rogue, credits the fans for making the reboot happen. Here we go. When Disney bought uh, Marvel, they apparently put out a question to the internet world asking, you know, which show from the 90s they'd like to see come back the most. And X-Men won hands down. So thank you. Sugar. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad she said sugar because <laughs> in the in the comics, um, Rogue has a real thick southern accent. Right, right. And they didn't portray that in the in the films, which I did enjoy, at least the first two, or for a handful of them actually. The first class was good and a couple others. But yeah, she would say sugar and sweetheart. Uh so X-Men 97 series uh, premieres today on Disney Plus. Here's our next clip. Former UFC fighter takes a job as a bouncer in the Florida Keys where things are not as they seem. And here Jake Gyllenhaal recounts the first thing Roadhouse co-star Conor McGregor said to him before the filming. Listen, I'm a white belt in acting and I'm here to learn. And, you know, the interesting thing with us is I said the same thing to him. You know, I'm a beginner, I'm a white belt in this, I'm here to learn. And even as we're grappling, you know, in some of those, he's instructing me. Like whispering through his mouth, telling me like, "There's a scene at the end where I'm choking him out," and then he was like, "Yeah, that's right, right, yeah." And then I start choking him. He's like, "Yep, you got me, you got me." And then he's like, "Wrap the leg, wrap the leg," and I'm wrapping. He's like, "You really got me." <laughs> Uh, Roadhouse streams uh, Thursday on Amazon. Do you Prime. know his name has popped up, oh. Jake Gyllenhaal, to play uh, potentially play Batman? Oh, do you see that? I I, I could that. see that yeah. possibly. Yeah. Uh, Casey just pulled up the uh, Rotten Tomatoes uh, tomato meter. Is at sixty nine percent for Road. Not bad. Not bad, bad at all. all. Yeah. yeah. Well, the originals probably floats in that range. And that is the entertainment report. All right, we need to take a break. We have several things happening today, including uh, Fox Good Day and Secret Text Word, and we're also going to have uh, TNA wrestler Moose in the studio. Uh, and a few other things shaking down. So we'll take a quick break, come back in just a moment, and move forward on this Wednesday morning. Hang out. Metro traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Thanks, Kath. Just like to remind you, in case you did not know it, today is Won't You Be My Neighbor Day. Won't, Won't you, you be, be my, my neighbor? neighbor? It honors Mr. Fred Rogers. It would have been like 90, right? Uh, older, well, older than yeah, I think he's probably older. Not sure when he was born, but he was, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, he was, uh, of course, he was uh, served as a sniper in Vietnam. <laughs> That's right, mm -hmm. yes, he was a sniper. No, he was not a sniper. Um, so, of the, of the movies, there is a documentary and there is the Tom Hanks movie, which is terrific, but the documentary for me resonates a bit more because it's the actual footage, it's the actual guy, it's that actual Senate. Um, hearing yeah. where he just steals the, their hearts. Yeah, uh, it's it's wonderful. Yeah, it's great. Oh, geez, uh, and he would have been ninety six. Sorry. Oh, he would have been ninety six. Okay, yeah. I thought for some reason I thought he would have been in the hundred range, but um, born in nineteen twenty eight. Okay, Kathy, put on a sweater, go over to your neighbor that you've never talked to before, and say, "Won't you be my neighbor?" <laughs> yep, and then no wait to be shot. Uh, it encourages, a, won't you be my neighbor day, encourages people to perform random acts of kindness and gratitude to their neighbors and anyone they cross paths Aww. with today. I just pissed a heart in your lawn. So, <laughs> <laughs> so be extra special nice to strangers today and neighbors uh, alike. So, uh, yeah, Mr. Rogers was uh, was pretty awesome. He was, he was a very, he was a genuine individual. He saw so much dying in the killing fields of <laughs> Vietnam. <God. laughs> that... that for him to hang that 180. Yeah, the Tet Offensive. Oh, my God. A lot of people don't know that he was a... Uh, when they yeah, first, the first picture hero. of him, you can't find it, but it's him uh, with a necklace made of ears. Wow. Oh, my God, stop. Yeah. I did love him. We did, as a kid, That I remember sitting down in front of our tube TV and watching yeah. Mr. Rogers. Yep. And he very ASMR-inducing. So I, yeah. I can remember as a child being lulled yeah. into... Uh, kind of a hypnotic state by Mr. Rogers and and also Bob Ross and uh, some of these other television personalities before I knew what ASMR was. I, you know what, what actually got me watching that series as a kid was um, was the uh, the train. I yeah, the train was the coolest yes, thing. Yeah. The trolley. Yeah, yes, it was it. awesome. Yeah. yeah, I um just was never into it. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I like well, him. You're still in them. No, no, no. I, I mean, I like him and everything, but uh, I just I never watched it. I didn't like it. I didn't like the. Uh, the feel of it all, right. it just wasn't interesting to me. Okay. It was sweet. Yeah. It was a sweet show. 
All right, so anyhow, today's it's Mr. Rogers Day, essentially. So uh, I, I saw this list. Actually, Steve sent this list over to me. I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, it is a list of 20 iconic things that are turning 50 years old in 2024. Oh, cool. Yeah, and this is from uh, Mental Floss. Great website, by I the way. I love it. Just want to dig around and kill some time. They have great quizzes and, and some fun facts and some uh, cool little... Uh, um, surveys and things like that and doohickeys. Actually, great shopping lists. Oh, you know? really? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Kathy. All kinds of, you know, interesting, quirky little things that you Doodads. can buy. Okay. There's lots of stuff. I use it as a as a nice repository for ideas of uh, when uh, the holidays are rolling around. So anyhow, here are some of the things that are turning 50 this year in 2024. Post-it notes. Post-its. Were created in uh, 19, well, it says in 1968. Well, it's not when it was created. They they entered the picture in 1974. Uh, but he had accidentally, the guy, Spencer Silver, accidentally developed an adhesive that stuck <laughs> the balance of being weak enough to separate papers without tearing while still being strong enough to stick to an additional surface. We talked to Mira Servino, and she was here promoting the, uh, you know, the, uh, the sit-around for Romy and Michelle, the screening and all that stuff. And she said she met him. And uh, they they conversed, and he says now when he goes to any reunion or any family function, they bring up Romy and Michelle. Yeah. So, so it, history has flipped itself. And yeah. So he, it was created by an accident. Well, there was a man. So yeah, the, he created this uh, this adhesive somehow or another, and he didn't have a practi practical way to use it, use it, Kathy. But I don't know how he came up with that idea. Okay. But a man named Art Fry. Entered the picture in 1974. While singing in church, he wondered if there was a way to leave a stick on bookmark in his hymnal without damaging it upon removal. Fry and Silver worked together to develop prototypes and eventually the modern day post-it note. Wow. Was born. And that was the whole benefit of the post that you could stick it on, you know, uh, in your cubicle or whatever, or stick it on something, uh, you know, and it wasn't it wasn't going to rip off what was ever underneath it. Yeah, if you use tape yeah. on a on a uh, You're gonna F on, it up. on a piece of paper when you tried to take that note back off, it would it would tear it. And I you've post-its everywhere, right? Like I have yeah. them at home in my desk. I've got yep. them here. Yeah. Yeah, I use them quite a bit. I, I did just a jot little notes down here. I use them at work all the time, just as reminders. Uh, also turning 50 years old this uh, this year is the Rubik's Cube. Oh, wow. Uh, all right, so the Rubik's Cube has is, is, is gone through, we talked about this, many, uh, many changes. What what now, because you said they have now super large, I think yeah. your, your son, is it Carter that exhausted Carter, it? Carter, yeah. Um, how large has it gotten? How many How many cubes? Uh, dude, I saw one one time. I Because you can go on YouTube and find watch people solve these things. There's tons yeah. and tons and tons of videos. I saw one that had large cubes. It's bizarre. On the outside and little ones in the center mm -hmm. section. So it had like, I don't know. Like twenty on each side, Jesus. something ridiculous. It was dumb. There, there's uh, these people I'm that dumb. Can do this. Yeah. It's, it's they're like human computers. I've never been able to solve that. They have a, a one that's basically just like a four per side. Um, yes. I don't know if I've been able to solve that. But back uh, when the Rubik's cube was popular in the eighties. Uh, Sorry, I was okay. looking up a video, but I wanted to show you guys. <laughs> okay. um, they had one called the Missing Link. Uh, and it was these chain links that were colored, yeah, and I, I was those. able I was able to solve that. One. Okay, yeah, I got close on a Rubik's cube, so close that it haunted me, uh -huh. and I threw it away because <laughs> I couldn't do it because I'm too <laughs> stupid. I and let, the way Carter explained to me, he's like, "There's an algorithm. It's an algorithm. It's just an algorithm." Stick it up yeah. your ass. Yeah. I do, you, I do, still, you can say algorithm all you want. Yeah. I still don't understand. Yeah. We'll, just solve, it. we'll just solve it. it. We'll just solve it. We'll just solve it. I can't. Yes. No, I've, I've never even once come close to it. And Jay said the same thing, that there's an algorithm. And we even looked up a YouTube video how to reset the cube, the cube so that you can then right. work to solve it. We couldn't even reset it. Yeah, there should be a <laughs> button that has a factory reset on it. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. So the video I wanted to show you guys is my friend uh, my son friend, Jesus, I'm sick today. I apologize. No. My, my son's friend, uh, uh, Topher, and my son's name is Ben. His <laughs> friend Topher um, has done uh, these world records of um, three by three Rubik's Cubes. And Steve, you were talking about different sizes of yes. all of them. Um, and so Topher specializes in the three by threes and the two by twos, but he does them in these record times. And, and Preston, yeah, it's the algorithm, but uh, so what? You still have to have the ability to yeah. be able to look at it, see what you're doing, comprehend it and all of it, and then do it in under seven seconds. Yeah, it's crazy. It's insane. I can't work a door key. Uh, so it's it's 50 years old. It was developed in 1974 by a Hungarian puzzle lover named Erno Rubik. Friggin' puzzle lover. It's insane <laughs> that that is still... Yeah. I mean, it's still competitions, and it's in, in, incredibly popular. So uh, 
I would imagine there's very few places around the world where you could hand someone a Rubik's Cube and they not know what you're supposed yeah. to attempt to do. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Right? Yep. And there are knockoffs, too. But, like, why would you bother getting a knockoff if you just get the Rubik's one? Yeah. Boobix Cube. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'd do that one. Yeah. You can do that one? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, yeah. I would do that one. Yeah. Uh, also uh, turning 50 years old is the UPC barcode. Yeah. I thought it was older than 50 years. So did I. I honestly did. Yeah. Isn't the I thought Jesus that? invented that. <laughs> Isn't the inventor local and made a, a mint off of that? Really? Yeah. Um, is this, and did he sing the girl from Ipanema? <laughs> no. Nick, the, there is a, the guy that created the strip on the back of credit cards. He's local. Maybe that's what I'm thinking yeah. of. Oh. That's right. That's right. Yes. Inventor Joe Woodland came up with the idea uh, of now what is called the barcode. And he came up with it while relaxing on the beach. He jotted a design in the sand and knew that it had the potential to revolutionize shopping. Uh, so when they explain, the, it's actually fairly simple on how it works, but uh, it did. It, it, I remember when the barcodes came in. So when do they? So when do they say it came in? Seventy four. Seventy four. So yeah, fifty years ago. Yeah. Uh, the first UPC barcode was scanned in a small Ohio town called Troy. And it blew up. In 1974. <laughs> uh, he went through a series of trials, prototypes, and designs and eventually had it. Uh, so, uh, oh, and you know what, it, what product it was on? Wh what? It was on a pack of Wrigley's Juicy Fruit Gum. Wow. wow. I'm a fan of Juicy Fruit. Yeah. That's a good question. That's a good trivia question. And so, after he invented it, he said, I am become death, Preston. But that changed everything because before that, the uh, the uh, uh, cashier had oh. to manually enter in how much it was and, and for every single item that came across. And it but, would have taken you a lot longer to get through the checkout aisle. The scanning capabilities have gotten so much better. I'm, I'm You know, like, especially if you're doing checkout, you know, at, yeah. at the supermarket, mm -hmm. you used to have to get it perfectly on it to oh, get it yeah. to scan and now the bag can be rumpled and it's it, upside down it, yep. it yeah. gets it yeah. yeah exactly so they have improved that over the years all right i was surprised to see this 50 years old uh this year bailey's irish cream that surprised me wow. i thought it was way yeah. older yeah. than yeah. that I, I thought it would have gone back to you know his, his historic celtic uh uh, yeah, you know, so 1880 or something. Yep, Bailey's Irish Cream. This liqueur is iconic for being the first of its kind, apparently. A surprisingly delicious combination of the richness of cream and the powerful punch of whiskey. Are you a fan? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I do. I, <laughs> oh, you weren't asking me? Yeah, it's okay, man. <laughs> Nick is sick. <laughs> uh, I, I don't drink it all the time, but it's a nice treat. I'm okay. Not, I'm not a big Irish cream fan, but yeah, it's yummy. What about uh, over vanilla ice cream? You ever do that? I have not done that. Try it. I need to do it's that. It's good. My friend was saying on Sunday, because uh, uh, he was he was going to try and get to the state store uh, to buy a Bailey's Irish cream type of drink. Uh, it's on, Like a mixed, a pre-made? Pre-made. I want to say he he said it was almost like a shamrock shake. What's what's in a uh, What's in a car bomb? Uh, that and into a uh, Guinness. into a Guinness, yeah, okay. kind of Guinness, and you drop a uh, you drop the the Bailey's in there and yes, yeah, okay. it. Um, Pat House said uh, he watched a guy <laughs> do a, an Irish car bomb all by himself. He was by himself. <laughs> he saw it while he was looking in the mirror at his hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, my my buddy, my best friend Steve. This wasn't an Irish car bomb, but we used to call them depth charges. I guess you could call them boiler makers too. Yeah. Essentially, you drop a shot of something into a beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we were doing tequila. Oh, my God. Just stupid. <laughs> and I have video of him doing a full-on regurgitation of all of that launch in wow. a parking lot. Oh. Right after he slammed a whole beer with a shot of tequila. And then it. later he stripped at his mother's Christmas party. No, that was me. <laughs> that was me. But Bailey's is only 50 years old. Oh, Very that really shocks me. Surprised yeah. to see that this morning. All right, another thing turning 50 this year, the Heimlich Maneuver. Whoa. Yeah, only nine, 50 years old? Yeah. It was, what did uh, they do before that? Yeah. Before Henry Heimlich popularized... The ball kick. ...the thrust maneuver, <laughs> uh, the common response to choking... Oh, my balls! No, it was to hit you on the back. Yep. Yeah. You know, and which, could, as we've learned, can actually make it go down further and cause more of a problem. Precisely. Uh, you both have used the Heimlich yes. uh, uh, to, to save people. Yep, Stephen, or Casey and I both had uh, Heimlich, our son. Kathy yeah. went uh, down to find out if she was having an appearance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When, when moments of emergency arrive, <laughs> I remember when, that, uh, when uh, that came, when that became a thing, and I remember on was it like Good Morning America or something I saw, it, and they were making a big thing about it. And it sort of had like a like a, a, a PR push behind. It. Yes, yeah, very much so. Um, I when Jace was choking on a piece of steak, um, I do remember like the immediate reaction though was to jump up, and I was like immediately I have to call Bill Burns. No, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I was immediately behind him. So, oh, okay. And, listen, and I am familiar with it. I know how it works. So I don't know what would have happened if he stopped breathing. Sure. Do you know if I would have been able to do it or not? But that was the immediate reaction. I was already behind him, ready to... To, to do the high mic. To yeah. go, if I guess, if I needed to. What you don't realize is is the... Um, the the uh, torque that you need. I don't know. Yes. The force. Yeah, the, the force. The force. Yeah. yeah. You really have to. I I felt like I punched Carter. Oh boy. Yeah. She got hard. You. I remember you right after it happened. You said that, and you were yep. worried that you would, might cause damage by doing it that hard. But so with the high mic and uh, <clears throat> like the uh, the situation, um, uh, his deal where he saved his child, and they they have that mask thing, that mm-hmm. auto suck for lack of a better term, mm-hmm. that device. I assume that would be even more efficient than the Heimlich, correct? Maybe, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, it's all about getting air pressure moving right, right. in there to get that obstruction it's out of the It's this mass device that you, um, yeah. Uh, it started as a theory based on the doctor's observations in dogs and turned out to have a high success rate in preventing uh, fatal choking episodes. So, uh, yeah, I guess conceivably you could do the Heimlich on a dog, I right? I you could, yeah. I mean, for, for laughs. <laughs> Just for fun. I'm not choking. Uh, also turning 50 in 2024 is Stephen King's first novel, Carrie. Oh, it was his first. Came out in 1974. Yes, it was. So, uh, did you, uh, when did you become a King fan? Was it right from the start? No, 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 no. I didn't until I, the, the first Stephen King book I, re- I read was The Dark Tower, and that was well into his okay. career. Actually, it was uh, The Gunslinger, which is the first of the Dark Tower series. And it was so weird and cool. And I was aware of him already. I right. knew who he was and I knew about the the books that had become movies. But once I picked that book up, I'm like, oh, this is a whole trippy universe. I'm getting into this. I remember walking through, uh, it was <laughs> Models, uh before it was mostly just uh, sports. Uh, but it was a department store and uh, they had a big display for this book. And I'm like... Well, that's kind yeah. of cool. And uh, and then he was off and running. Most people know the movie, but in the book, Carrie's destruction is way bigger than Worse. in the book. In <laughs> fact, throughout the book, you'll see these little excerpts that take place between some of the chapters. And there are Senate hearings from what they, her name was Carrie White. They called it the White Commission because it was such... And in Saint, like she destroys the town. So in the second, and so there there are Senate committees discussing what happened. That's how big it was. So in the second one, um, they they show a little bit more of that, and they did a made for TV version where she's raining like boulders down and and stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. and she's, I mean, yeah, the book's good, so very telekinetic. All right, so for Casey Ooh. turning Ooh. fifty years old this year. Connect Four. No wow. kidding. The game. Wow. Is that your favorite 50. of the of those kind of games? Strategy based games? Yeah, although I just started I picked up Backgammon uh, last week and I'm really, really enjoying that. But cool. back- you have to play Claire. She loves it and she's good at it. Yeah, the the par- the problem with Backgammon is uh there is an there's a big time element of, of luck and chance. Too and- much back and not enough gammon? Well no, you gotta roll dice, right? Okay. And and so right. uh you know you're you're you know uh, at the mercy of of, of the of uh, chance of chance. So what I like about Connect Four is that there's a it's it's all strategy. Right. Uh I clearly Remember those first commercials? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, see here diagonally. Mm-hmm. And then the kid guy goes, pretty sneaky, sis. Mm-hmm. I'm going to kill you. I, th- <laughs> yeah, I thought that you. would be a good name for a band, pretty sneaky, sis. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Yep. Yep, absolutely. I like that a lot. Uh, so I want to fight you. Uh, Connect Four was developed by the board game company Milton Bradley, debuted in 1974, was inspired by the classic Tic-Tac-Toe. And uh, yeah, it turns 50 years old. And Casey is... Amazing at it. Yes, like I, I I suck at that type of game. Yeah. Period. My my spatial awareness and and what's going on strategy wise has just never been good. But I've watched you yeah. wipe the floor with competitors over and over. It's simple enough, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like chess where there are so many moving pieces. I do and, like chess, and, and I do love chess too. But so many moving pieces and different, you different know, pieces moves. do different things. And, yeah. You know, this is just one at a time and. You know, so it's for for my feeble brain. It, it can you know I can wrap my mind around it. All right. Also, turning fifty this year uh, are Skittles. Aww, Skittles. Love Skittles. Yep. Came out in the United Kingdom in nineteen seventy. Chase the rainbow, right? Yeah, um, that's like sort of uh, like childhood. I, I think Skittles is childhood I, for you. Yeah. yeah when yeah. I think of uh, you know candy and when I was a kid and what I would get when I would go I to rem- the store. Kathy, I clearly remember. Do you guys remember when a new candy would come out, a new rollout? Mm-hmm. Like I remember. 
there, there'd be a big push because you'd also have that information conveyed to you. There was not the internet. TV commercials yes. would start popping Especially up. Especially Saturday morning Especially cartoons. Especially Saturday. Exactly, yeah. Nick. So I remember when Razzles came out. Yeah. And Razzles were a, a candy and a gum. To si- same time. Whatever you, you could either use it as like a, a sweet tart yeah. or chew it and it would become a gum. I remember when the uh, the whatchamacallit was the introduced. The whatchamacallit, oh, yeah. And I remember when they changed the the, the hundred hundred thousand dollar bar, they changed it to the hundred grand bar. Mm-hmm. They like changed the names on some of these things. And, it was, and they would it was advertise big, it heavily. Right? Yeah. yeah. We did a taste test, remember? And I identified the color. Yes. Of the, yeah, of the yeah, Skittles. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then I think right. we tried M&M's and we weren't as successful. Weren't as successful. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you and I were doing that. I um I, so I watched Nickelodeon yesterday. I was just uh, just I, I turned on SpongeBob and I, I hadn't watched Nickelodeon in, in a while, but man, the commercials are way different. Like I was like, oh wow, there's a what, what are you seeing? So first of all, there was a toy commercial. I'm like, I can't tell you the last time I was watching TV and a toy commercial came on. It was right, like right. for these Jurassic Park. Uh, uh, dinosaur animals thingies, and then there was a Fruit Loops commercial. I was like, "What was the last time I saw an actual?" I know I said the uh, dinosaur. Thingy, uh, no, it's whatever. okay. I didn't uh, say anything. I'm like, I didn't. <laughs> you looked at each other. I saw your eyes. <laughs> Uh, but there was a Fruit Loops commercial, and man, do you remember like how big cereal commercials? Were? Casey and I remember one, one in particular uh, of many because they, they were so effective. But when they came out with Count Chocula, yeah, and Quisp, yeah, yeah, Quisp was the alien counterpart. You remember, Preston? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I and, and I was like, I have got to get this. I have a, a Quisp figurine in, the, yes. in my office. Yeah. In, yeah. Do you guys my, remember Quisp? Of course, yeah. And, and again, Steve, uh, weekday afternoon cartoons like DuckTales yes. and Tiny Toons. Now, and I appreciated that. Mine mine was, I was just watching uh, The Honeymooners. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> but like uh, weekday afternoon cartoons and then Saturday morning cartoons, it was uh, candy, it was toys, and it was cereal. That was yeah, it. Get, and they knew who was watching TV at that time. Oh, yeah. So we had uh, a listener in case he doesn't His name is it. Seth Malin. Uh, Seth Malin, and he created at my own breakfast cereal. Oh, nice. And he made an ad for it, and I'm going to show it to our YouTube camera. It's called They're called Presbos. <laughs> oh. It's great. And it says, Gadzooks, it's Presbos. And he's got the box. There's a little kid enjoying it. My face is on the box. And it says, uh, Good morning, it. And it says, Now, with more whole grain cymbals and drumsticks and marshmallow feet. <laughs> Your regular Saturday morning thing, and it's awesome. uh, he's got up in the in the top here. It's uh, Casey as the um, what was that character? The Quaker Oats guy. The Quaker Oats guy. And it says uh, Casey joke, <laughs> meaning there would be like a joke inside right, yeah, there, yeah. little little prize that you would have inside. So thank you, man. That's I love this. I'm I'm gonna frame this and I'm keeping it in the shirts and crafts section. Yeah. Casey, Casey likes office. it. <laughs> hey, do you guys think, yeah. by the way, tricks when they chose the rabbit as the spokesperson for the tricks because tricks kind of look like a little uh, fruity rabbit turds just, oh i don't i don't know uh, well, i think do you, that, you're asking do they choose the rabbit as the symbol because the food looks like rabbit crap yeah what do you think uh no no probably cause, cause not the original, i bet you it did what it was supposed to be when they were going with tricks was supposed to be out-of-town businessmen oh like prostitutes turning tricks. Yeah, yeah, you turn, oh i didn't know yeah. that i'm thinking maybe tricks is a playoff of magicians and magicians will pull a rabbit, rabbit out of that. That. I, I think maybe in fact i think that figured into one of the eye campaigns you know it kind of looks like crap it looks yeah. like <laughs> yeah, let's like call let's get a rabbit what do we call this diarrhea <laughs> all right skittles are 50 years old also turning 50 years old this year uh modern liposuction Modern liposuction. Think what's any better at it, uh, Casey? From what I understand, it is still the most um, the most painful uh, and the most invasive. In fact, didn't uh, Kanye's mother, mother die getting died uh, lipo? Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. I don't think that they. I mean, I guess there is a modern way to it, but I th- it is. You're right. Still dangerous. I mean, and it's. Have you ever seen it done? Yeah. Oh my Hell god! Oh my Freaking god! No, I'm not yeah. looking. It's but gnarly. I think it's very bloody, and I think that's why it can be so dangerous. It's because it can bloody, lose so, so, so much blood. You remember Shell had the procedure done years ago. Oh, that's right. And what they have to do oh, God. in the post is they put these, they install these little gutters, oh, like these God. tiny little gutters at, at the bottom. What about and if leaves get in them? Listen to this note. You have to wear these two... Uh, bottles on the side Ooh. that collect runoff. Wow. And they drain out into these things and you have to take them out and, you, and it's all this blood and all this oh. stuff that comes in. How often drains. are you emptying them? Um, 
a couple, I don't remember oh, how God. often we emptied oh, them, but she had to wear them for several days. And then you have to, uh, you have to give yourself these injections. Holy S. What are the injections? Uh, to keep you from having an infection and stuff okay. like that. If I remember correctly, it was, uh, I'm like, man, well, more power to you, but I, I couldn't do that. No go way. Ahead, go ahead. Steve, way one of my, my best friend in high school and in college, um, he would often do medical testing for money. And uh, he did a whole lot of procedures, and it would be three, four hundred dollars yeah. at a time. Uh, he got six hundred dollars to do liposuction, and that, and he was not a, a heavy person. He didn't have a lot of fat on his body, but they did the thing where they they took this scope and they jammed it through his belly button, <laughs> scraped either side of his abdomen, and pulled it out. And he had he was bandaged up with what was that sound? <laughs> I know. <laughs> that was great. It's just like, like when a cat's about to spit up a hairball. <laughs> But listen, he did it voluntarily. It wasn't to remove a lot of fat. It was because of medical testing. But he was sidelined for like 10 days, two weeks because of how painful it was. Yeah. Wow. If you, if, for those who are unaware, you're literally, they kind of lift up the flap. Yep. They are sticking what basically jamming looks like a regular it. vacuum attachment. And they're like jamming, jamming it in it there. In that, yeah. yeah. Um, they have, so for, for procedures like Rochelle got done, because she got a few things when she went in. It was almost like, okay, if I'm going under. Yeah, like, I'm going to get like three things. She had a breast lift. Yeah, and, yeah. and so the, the recovery is um, very difficult. It's so difficult that there are places now where um, they'll almost house you. It's yeah. almost, it's spa-like so that you can relax and, and try to heal because it is so painful. Yep, no, agreed. All right, so that, that turns 50 years old. They 50. Apparently... They, it, there, there was a different version of that they did before, which was uh, really painful and had horrifying results. They started back in 1921, but they didn't perfect it. 1921. 1974. How, how awesome must that have been? All right, yeah. we got to move along quickly because we're yeah. going to have to break here shortly. Uh, another thing, turning 50, and Steve, I wanted to bring this up. Maybe you and I are the only ones who remember this, but the Meow Mix jingle. Meow, 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 meow. So you're not, you and I aren't the only one. Please um, have that go again. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that turns 50 years old this year. Uh, the Kinder Surprise Eggs. Oh, my God. My kids love those things. Well, at least one of my kids does. Okay. <laughs> and I, um, what, is it a plastic egg? Yeah, a little, uh, um, well, it's a, it, I mean, it's in plastic, uh, and it's, I don't know, it's got like a little toy that comes in it. Oh, right. I know. Little yeah. little tchotchke yeah. in it, right? Jace yeah. loves these too. So it's chocolate, Yeah. and it kind of has like a, almost, I don't know if it's Nutella, but almost like a, a Nutella type consistency on okay. the inside with like a little spoon that they can eat, and then there's also a toy on the other side, teeny toy oh. that you can put together. Okay. By the way, I want to thank uh, listener Anthony uh, Penna. Anthony Della Penna is his name. He sent us a... Like a 25-pound box of candy for Easter. I yeah. love this guy. I, don't ha I yeah. mean, Easter Bunny never has to buy candy for Jace. <laughs> There's everything in there. It, it's obscene how much candy he sent us. So, Anthony... Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. We yes, and yeah. there was a little bottle of uh, of Woodford Reserve in there too. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Well, happy Easter. Yeah, that's that your nice? kind of Easter bunny. That is. I want chicken. All right. I want liver. Meow oh, mix. Uh, meow mix. Meow mix. Please, please deliver. deliver. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also turning fifty years old this year, Day Quill. Day Quill. Uh, before that, oh. you only had Night Quill. I see. You only had NyQuil, the stuff that knocks your ass out. This yeah. is so you can be be somewhat groggy as you drive your dump truck. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, yeah. DayQuil is my go-to. Like if I'm yep. sick and and still need to function during the day, uh, that's what I'll I'll pick. Let up me tell you something. It's a, it's a patch. It won't fix everything, but it'll kind of get you moving along. DayQuil and or like NyQuil, if Ooh. if you can get sleep <laughs> yes. when you are sick, yeah. and I have not been sick in quite a while, but it, that is a godsend. Yep. I actually don't like NyQuil because it makes me feel terrible in the morning and still groggy like I've not gotten enough sleep. It mm. can be tough to work if you've taken NyQuil the night before, I think. Just anyway. don't go to work. All right, one last thing, and then we got to take a break. Uh, turning a 10 years old or 50 years old, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Wow, D &D. I thought that was older. D&D &D came out in 1974. My son, Parker, does a regular uh, Friday D&D &D thing. And uh, and so friends. so do so many celebrities that we know that are yeah. participating in it. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know my experience with Dungeons and Dragons? You have yeah. an experience with Dungeons no, and Dragons? No, not me personally, okay. but when it came, or I guess when my mother became aware of it, it was... Oh, the do, devil's tool. It, it, the devil is involved. They are, they are <laughs> re, you know, trying to talk to the other. Do not talk to those was, kids who play common. Dungeons and Dragons. Like, oh, yeah. And it, guess what it <laughs> did? it's just a game. It only made it more attractive to, to kids. Other, yeah. Absolutely. The, the, the final, this last season of, uh, of Stranger Things is all about that. Yep. And, uh, and how the whole town rallies against people playing D&D &D and all that stuff because it's 
Satan's tool and all that. So, Meanwhile, look at the games that are out now. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right. Anyhow, thought it was kind of an interesting th- uh, list. Steve, thank you for sending that over. It's at mentalfloss.com. 20 iconic things turning 50 in 2024. There's still other things on that list you may want to check out. We got to take a break because we're going live on Fox Good Day. So we'll turn right around and do that. Bizarre file coming up, too. So stay with us. Hey, WNMR. It's everything that rocks. We're going live on Fox Good Day right now. Um, okay. You're going to go see the movie Oppenheimer, right? <clears throat> you can see it either in a movie theater or watch it from your couch. Preston, what do you choose? I watched Oppenheimer from my couch because, number one, it's a really long movie, and at <laughs> some point you are going to have to pee. <laughs> True. And there were a gazillion different names of people that I couldn't keep track of, so I was happy that I could rewind it from time to time and not get lost I agree. in the plot. I saw it. Yes. I was so confused. I had to keep rewinding, and I thought it's long, but it moves right. fast. I completely screwed up this Sorry. talk. Mm-hmm. Forget Oppenheimer, for God's sake. <laughs> okay. It's just a movie. Would you rather Oops. see it on your couch or go to the theater? Just Steve? a movie. It depends on the movie, Mike. I mean, like, uh, I went to see <laughs> Dune does? twice in one yeah. weekend because I wanted to see it in the theater. And even though that has a lot of characters, it's a story I'm familiar with, so I didn't get lost in it. But but the scope of it, I wanted to be in that movie theater presence. But okay. other movies, I like to watch at home because they're more convenient. Steve, you know that. Well, here's the deal. Listen, these days, you don't have to be, say, an Alex Holly to have a home theater. <laughs> uh, and uh, But <laughs> yeah. the truth of the matter is is that you can, you can watch it in really wonderful conditions at home. However, that theater experience... For something like that, where you want that crowd reaction, or you just want to be have that communal thing, I pick and choose. If it's a quiet movie, uh, you know, they, they, people are just they, they make noise and cell phones go on, and regardless of all the restrictions, yeah. people still ruin it. I hate to be taken out of the experience, so I can watch it in a controlled environment at home, big screen, nice sound system, and that gets it done. But you know. Would you want to you want to see Avatar? You know, you want to see it on a huge IMAX screen. You want to see Oppenheimer yes. came out. If good to your original selection uh, was I- 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 IMAX. So in some cases, I think that really does make a difference. But more often than not, I think I kind of want to see it at home. Mm. If I can guarantee myself like a noon. At a theater where I'm alone, I'll do that. <laughs> done deal. Done. No, I no, I agree. We we do have because of our hours, we do get to go to earlier mm-hmm. screenings, I, and we can do that. But if you go to like a like a Friday night screening of a movie, you can't oh, complain please. because you've gone into the mouth of the devil. Right. I like even like the 9:30 a.m. screenings. I like to Fine. go to the early because oh. well, I mean we all get up really early. Mike, Alex, all of us yeah. do. So I don't mind. I like uh-huh. doing the early morning screening. Part of that, uh, yeah, Mike is because there's a little less. Uh, you don't have to worry about the residual. I hate it. Uh, there are rude yes. people. Uh, yes, they are rude people, and it ruins mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I hate people. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's even mentioned subtitles yet. By the way, uh, subtitles. I, yeah, I watch TV subtitles. with subtitles so much too. now that, uh, that when I, I go too. to the movies, I'm like, <laughs> but wait, you, I need you, to you, read what they're saying. You can get screenings with <laughs> subtitles. Yeah, yeah, it, and they they will oh, provide. You yeah, you yeah, can. They have and, century. Yeah, uh, the uh, specific century uh, screenings of some movies. Yeah. Sure. What was it? I think it might have been White Lotus where I said, I can't understand what the hell they're saying. Oh, so yeah. I turned on. Do you know what they talk about? Mm-hmm. Christopher Nolan's movies, the way that the, the audio is mixed, can mm-hmm. often be difficult to hear the dialogue. Yeah. So you can do that at home. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. I love you guys. Thank love you, you love too. Love you. Thank you guys. <laughs> Smoochies. Bye bye. Mm. Alex was like, I love you. No. Yeah. <laughs> I started watching the holdovers on the plane on my phone. <laughs> And that was fine. Again, you know, finished it at home. So they, like, for a quiet movie, I'd rather, uh, it doesn't matter to me where I watch it, but I have not yet seen Dune and I won't until I go see it in the theater. Okay. I yeah. watched such a stupid movie on the plane. I was oh. so mad. It looked good. <laughs> I did like a quick, uh, like I it? watched like part of the trailer and I was like, this looks good. And then it was so stupid. What was it? Stupid. Um, House of Sand and Fog 2? No, <laughs> no. I forget the name of it. I'll have to look it up, but it was on Netflix and it was about a dragon. <laughs> Oh, the the, the, oh, the, the it's the one with um, Millie Bobby Brown. Brown. It is um, yeah. damsel. damsel. Yeah. yeah, I started it watching. It. I mean, it didn't get really good reviews. It's not unfortunately, good. It what I saw was I love just her too. Yeah, and she's awesome, and she looks yeah. fantastic. And the the, uh, the dragon talks, and it's just. <laughs> You know I was what though? Like, what am I watching? But then I got you know three quarters of the way through it. I was like, well, let's see how it ends. Have you ever seen Dragonheart? No. With uh, Sean Connery doing the voice of the dragon. Uh-uh. I'm a dragon. 
Yeah, that's. I think you might like no, that. No, and it was like a weird voice for the dragon. Like I was like, it needs to be like a little more. I don't know. It sound like Gary Lauer. Yeah. Masculine and scary. <laughs> I'm a dragon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Here, I'm gonna uh, breathe some fire on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God. Sorry, <laughs> got a little extra in that. Oh. No charge. <laughs> and can we call that br- dragon's breath wit? Um, <laughs> oh, dear God in heaven. I went and saw Dune on Saturday night, and also uh, it cost $20 to go to that movie. And yeah. it wasn't IMAX. It wasn't 3D. It was yeah. just a regular adult t- movie ticket. That's expensive. $20 and like 15 cents or something like that. That. Mm. I'm sorry, that is way too cost prohibitive. Listen, there was a pl- growing up, we pressed. We had a theater, and we called. My dad called it the Scratch House. It was a an old style grind grindhouse movie theater with a balcony. I'd go see everything there because no one would go to that theater. You would press him during the hot, the, the usually high traffic times at other theaters. You'd be alone. It was perfect. Love that. Yeah, I want to give a plug to a movie I told Steve about this. Courtroom dramas. It's on Sprout. Uh, no, I just I, I, I checked on the remote and it and it came up and I'm not sure what streaming network, but it's through Comcast, I okay. guess. But I feel like a, it's a court, it's straight it's courtroom, all right? in the courtroom. Yeah, the the original had flashbacks onto the ship, but this is all just in the courtroom. And I I was com- it was very compelling. I think so. Want to suggest that? All right, we oh my god, we didn't even do traffic. What? Oh god, Kathy. What's going on this morning? Stump Road is closed in Montgomery Township between 463 Horsham Road and County Line Road. Uh, this is a fire location. 95 southbound Jams Academy to the Betsy Ross Bridge and then Gerard into the Vine. The Vine westbound. Heavy 95 to Broad Street, the Ben Franklin Parkway to the Schuylkill. Blue Route northbound, Heavy McDade Boulevard to the Media Bypass. Southbound from Broomall to Media. Schuylkill eastbound slowing now from 202 into the Conshohocken Curve. That accident gone. Uh, eastbound also backs up from the Boulevard to Spring Garden. Jams South Street to University. West Westbound University to Montgomery, and then from the boulevard out to Gladwin, Blue Route to Gulf Mills. Pennsylvania Turnpike westbound, heavy from Willow Grove to Fort Washington in New Jersey, 55 northbound delays from Deptford to the 42 freeway. This traffic report brought to you by Whole Foods Market. Get your spring centerpiece at Whole Foods Market. Save 30% on spiral cut bone-in pork ham with prime through April 2nd while supplies last. Shop in-store or online. Terms apply. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Now, Bizarre. WMMR presents Bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre, Bizarre File. What's, what's so funny? So it says, get your spring centerpiece at Whole Foods, and then it says that you have 30% off spiral cut bone-in pork ham. Is that your centerpiece? <laughs> yeah. That is an interesting centerpiece. Is that a spiral <laughs> bone in ham? I think they mixed the intro line with the deal. Ah. <laughs> a different deal. All right. This <laughs> is brought to you by Horizon Services. Horizon's licensed plumbers have same day 24 7 solutions. Plus, they're offering $50 off any repair. You can schedule your visit today at horizonservices.com forward slash WMMR. A former uh, prison boss who beat her husband in a sustained campaign of abuse was finally exposed by a nanny cam that captured the behavior, as according to a documentary that was revealed on the BBC. Cherie Spencer made her husband, Richard Spencer's life, a living hell with physical attacks and verbal this. humiliation at their seven-bedroom home in East Yorkshire. On one occasion, the former prison reform chief beat him with a wine bottle so hard it permanently disfigured his ear. Whoa! Spencer was jailed for four years. The judge, Kate Rayfield, said this is the worst case of controlling and coercive behavior I've ever seen. But she she was diabolical about it. She always created the impression it was him going after her. Unknown to Spencer, her abuse had been captured on a security camera that the couple had installed to monitor their three young children. The footage is now being released uh, for the first time in a documentary called My Wife, My Abuser, The Secret Footage. Uh, Shear tried to stop the documentary being broadcast uh, in the Crown Court, but failed. And since then, she's applied for a prohibited steps to order through the family court, which luckily was rejected and thrown out at the first hearing. Uh, So for years, Mr. Spencer secretly recorded video and audio of his wife's wine-fueled tirades in which she would call him a pussy and a dum-dum. Oh, my God. And caused bruises and scratches that he would cover with makeup before taking their children to school and nursery. Some of the attacks were caught on two cameras in the playroom and bedroom of their home as Mr. Spencer would also take photographs of the injuries he suffered. He would email pictures and videos to himself and delete them from his phone so his wife did not realize he was recording her assaults. After police were called to the family home, 
home in 2021 by a concerned welfare worker. He handed over all the images of his bruised face taken on different days. And now they've got this documentary. So in the footage, if they say, well, you watch the footage and you see she's walking around the kitchen with a knife. And she says she later claims she took it away from him. And then when you hear the audio, that's not the case at all. Wow. A shocked crocodile handler came within an inch of losing his manhood when a 15-foot beast bit him between the legs after being poked with a stick in his enclosure. The experienced reptile expert was giving a display to dozens of visitors at the Crocodile Creek theme park in South Africa when he was viciously attacked. The Nile crocodile, the largest living reptile, and with the most powerful bite force in the world, suddenly whipped its head around and clamped its jaws on his crotch. Oh, my God. The handler shrieked as he saw the predator latch onto him just below his waist and pull him to the ground as a second, slightly smaller crocodile ran to join the attack. Torres screamed for help as the giant croc kept the handler pinned down, but he managed to stand, and the beast with 64 teeth released him, allowing to run to safety. Footage was taken by an onlooker and captured the moment. Uh, He said to have sustained serious leg injury, was rushed to the hospital to, to have urgent stitches put in. A tourist who witnesses uh, uh, witness the attack told emergency services who raced in to help that the handler had both of his hands on his groin, and he said, don't hold them, count them. <laughs> All right. A crocodile expert said the croc was just giving him a warning if he had wanted to kill him, and then he said, then trust me, he could have easily had. He said where he was extremely lucky is the second crocodile which rushed in did not bite him as if it had, uh, then they could have had a fought over him in a tug of war and torn him apart. Ooh. That's how powerful yeah. those things F are. F this. Uh, it looks like the handler's lucky day uh, happened and this croc was just a bit grumpy, she said. Yeah, just a bit grumpy, yeah. almost ripping your nutsack off. Yeah, but if he was really mad, he would have he would have ripped his whole body in, into pieces. So, yep. All right, this is a terrible story. Terrible story. This is a cautionary tale, and that's why I'm sharing this. A three-year-old child was behind the wheel of a truck that hit and killed a two-year-old girl over the weekend in California. What the hell? Yeah, the two-year-old was uh, standing near a taco stand at the edge of a parking lot at a gas station. Officers found a man at the scene who was the owner of the gas truck that left. He left it running while he parked it at a gas pump. The three-year-old child was in the back seat of the truck in a car seat. When the man entered the gas station alone, the three-year-old exited the car seat, got into the driver's seat, and then I guess somehow or another put it into gear, and it ran over the two-year-old. So here's the deal. I ne- I always, I don't care what it is, I shut the vehicle off and put it in park. I don't care how quick. Yeah. I don't care what I'm doing. I never run into any place with the, with the vehicle running. Yeah, two things. Shut it off and one, park it. Number one, you don't leave the kid in the car. Yeah. Number two, you definitely don't leave the car running and leave the kid in the car. Uh, the family was setting up their taco stand when they saw the truck moving back towards it. They were the ones who had the oh two-year-old. My God. Just horrible, horrible story. So I just wanted to pass that along as a reminder. Don't do stuff like that. Do not leave your kids in the car. All right. And then uh, finally, don't do this either. Don't man- do this. A manager has been suspended at, in uh, Cumberland County, PA, after allegedly pleasuring himself in a booth inside of a uh, restaurant. You can't do that, right? Yeah, he's the manager, too. The incident happened on I'm March... I'm taking a break. I'm first. taking a jerk break. At the fir- uh, March 1st, it was at the Chipotle no! on Trindle Road... Authorities report that the male manager of the business exposed his genitals and proceeded to pleasure himself in front of people while he was sitting at a booth inside. Oh, yeah. Maybe oh, won't, yeah. no one will notice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Officials state when they began their investigation, Chipotle suspended the unidentified 26-year-old man with the intent to dismiss him. Since then, police say the man has been charged with indecent assault, <laughs> indecent exposure, open lewdness, disorderly conduct, and harassment as well. You got to be really horny to be. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes, you do. I'm, I'm to go right over here. I just can't take it yeah, anymore. Yeah. You guys pardon me for a second. Yeah, I love all this fresh food. All right, and that is what I have in the Bizarre File for you. So we got a secret text word prize, and it's your chance to win tickets to see Trey Kennedy growing up comedy tour, which is going to be Thursday, April 18th at the Grand in Wilmington. Uh, Tickets are on sale now via thegrandwilmington.org, but if you'd like to win them for free, text the word secret to 39333. You might win. We'll also get a random text for that way besides using the secret text word part of that. So get on that now. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Go next door. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right. Thank you, Kathy. So tomorrow, uh, the, the jewel of the Camden waterfront 
USS Battleship New Jersey uh, is being moved. They are going to move her over to refurbish done on it. And uh, yeah, when they move when they move that gal, it's a big deal. Well, yeah, well, we saw when they brought it in initially, we were out, uh, one of our listeners invited us out on a uh, speedboat. Yeah. And we watched it come up the river. It was really it was cool. awesome. Uh, but now there's some interesting things taking place with that, and it happens tomorrow. And we actually have the CEO of the Battleship New Jersey. Please welcome Marshall Spivak. Yay! To our program. Marshall, good morning. Good morning, guys. Really appreciate you having me on. Uh, no problem, man. All right, so uh, this is happening tomorrow, correct? Yes, tomorrow morning, uh, ship is departing Camden at exactly high tide on the river at 12.10 p.m. All right, and you guys have a fair amount of uh, pomp and circumstances taking place for this, right? We do. We do. As you guys were just talking about, this is the first time the ship has, has left uh, the pier in Camden since she returned home back in New Jersey back in 2000. So um, this is, you know, for, for many who served aboard, whether you're a World War II veteran in Korea or Vietnam, and our volunteers are up there. This is probably the last time that you might see the battleship ever move downriver. So, yeah. you know, we take that obligation seriously to our veterans, and uh, we're trying to to do it up tomorrow and uh, and uh, have the best event possible. It's a it's a huge source of pride, I know, to a, a lot of us, uh, you know, in the area. A lot of people just love it. You know, it's, it has this sense of majesty about it. It is obviously, I they believe, the most decorated. Um, battleship in World War II. Um, and, and so what, I assume there's some level of um, operation ability that you ha you maintain, but what, what did you have to really kick in to get this fully, um, you know, ready for this, um, for this move? Yeah, you're right. And actually she, she's the most decorated battleship in U.S. history, not just in World War II. Actually. Mm, wow. Um, we're very, very proud of that. So it's been uh, a gigantic task to get to uh, where we are today and for tomorrow. Um, you know, obviously this is uh, an incredibly expensive endeavor. Uh, it's about a $10 million project. So raising the funds necessary just to, to even kick off the preparations uh, was, you know, over a year plus in the making. Um, and now doing all the different things that we had to do to prep the ship to move, such as bringing on a, a crane into the pier and taking off the ship's mast and, search radar array that you know the spinning uh search radar at the top yeah uh, and we had to do those types of things just so we could fit under the wall whitman bridge wow. and even that uh high tide um we're really only going to clear the bridge by somewhere about 11 to 16 or 17 feet really <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Fall. wow, wow. Yeah. okay interesting all right so this is going to be dry docked um which is when's the last time that happened it's been almost 34 years since wow. last time the ship was dry docked so uh, tomorrow, the ship heads from Camden to the Paulsboro Marine Terminal for a few days, and there is when the final uh, preparations happen uh, to move over. And then on next Wednesday, on the 27th, is when we'll take the short journey from Paulsboro, about a mile and a half, two miles uh, across the river, over to the Philadelphia Navy Shipyard. And how long do you expect it to be in that dry dock, Marshall? Yeah, it's only it's a it's a rather short uh, endeavor actually. Uh, we only plan on being there about uh, two months or so, and we hope to be back uh, in uh, in Camden in early June, and then uh, open to the public again, uh, you know, mid to late uh, end of the month. So while it's dry docked, people can schedule tours to go underneath it, essentially see what it's like under that waterline. Absolutely, yeah, that's. Um, you know, we're, we're obviously, uh, we're closed, we're not open, we have no other sources of revenue coming in, so we are offering uh, dry dock tours. We've already sold almost 1,200 tickets already, mm -hmm. um, and so that work, uh, those tours will be happening on Saturdays and Sundays um, at the at the Navy Yard uh, while no work is being done uh, by the shipyard. So we'll have tours from about 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturdays, and uh, almost every Saturday and Sunday while we're there. Uh, with the exception of things like the the Broad Street Run, which you know closes down the campus, oh yeah, you, the yeah, yard. have to do it. I mean, I, well, you know, this doesn't come along uh, often, so and it, it's it's a yeah. it's a piece of history with all of uh, the work that's being done on it. Obviously, this is a um, a jewel in our in our uh, nation's history. Uh, I know that the the deck was refurbed in a lot of places. What all is being done to get it back to what you guys would like to see it at? 
Yeah, so most of the work, um, pretty much all of the work, to be honest, is being done what we say under the waterline. So ah. things that if you were to come see us in Camden, you might not be able to see, which means, which I think makes the dry dock tours even that much more special. So mm. we're, we're there's really three major projects: uh, uh, repainting of the hull, or as they say in the Navy, uh, applying a system of coatings, um, and then there are two different um, projects that deal with the ship's uh, cathodic protection system, which is basically the early warning. Um, corrosion system uh, underneath the hull, and so we're fi- we're we're uh, we're fixing those and um, making sure that the ship's system is actually meant for salt water. And where we are in the Delaware in Camden, we're actually in fresh water, so we're switching out the system of anodes that's on there in order to uh, really have a fresh water system. And we think that the maintenance and the the work that we're going to be doing in Philly is going to keep us floating for another 30 or so years. Awesome. Awesome. So when, and I, when people come to town, they invariably, if we're going around the, the, um, the city or, you know, relatives come in or whatever, uh, we always end up taking them to the battleship because it's so amazing to see. And so I always kind of quote up what I believe to be a fact to them that I believe I heard on the, one of my initial tours of the ship. And I want to make sure it's accurate before I go on with this. Uh, so I, I, I believe uh, the main guns could fire something the weight of a Volkswagen Beetle 20 miles. Am I correct in saying that? You are. You're correct. I'll go one step further in saying uh, one projectile from a six from uh, a 16 inch gun can go uh, up to 23 miles and hit something within 30 feet. And you have to remember, that's, at, that's technology, analog technology from the early 1940s. It's yeah. amazing. Um, yeah, nothing guided. It's just yeah. you aim it, you pull the trigger, and it goes. So and and so the the battleship had had shelled Guam and Okinawa and had you know and we're talking you know pivotal moments in in uh, in, in history. Um, so uh, with this, it was decommissioned what in 1991. So yeah, it was decommissioned in 1991. She came, uh, she became official uh, eligible for a donation in '98, and then came home back to Jersey in 2000. Uh, be- because it was so decorated, I mean, a lot of these ships, unfortunately, will, will you know, will get scuttled and and all that sort of stuff. I mean, you know, they or they were used scrap for other purposes of scrap. Yep. Um, uh, uh, was there was the battleship itself ever in danger of something like happening with its rich history? Was that still a possibility? You know, I think in the, in the late '90s there was probably a conversation about that, and realizing the you know the state the the good state of the ship at that time, uh, she was you know in in the mothball fleet, the uh, that, the reserve fleet, um, and so she was being kept up uh, to a certain extent by the Navy during that time. So, just given how well that the ship was maintained, I think that really put her on the path to be you know eligible for a donation. Um, and then ultimately, you know, when she came home in Camden and we do everything we can to, you know, put the money back into her to, to make sure that she's available. We have more areas of the ship open than any other museum ship in the country. Um, and we're really proud of that. And by the way, people can book you. You want to have a party on the ship? Yes. You can do that. Yeah, Uh, we had one. We had a band on the battleship event. So you guys are available for events that people can put together. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that when our next big project after, uh, dry dock is actually, replacing the sort of temporary tenting system, if you remember, on the yep. back of the ship, and actually sort of building a more permanent structure. Oh, nice. Yeah, and we think that will, you know, really allow us to really up our level of events. You know, during during COVID, when everyone wanted to do things outside, we became a really great destination for local high school proms and, and yeah. graduations and things like that. So we're really proud to be, you know, not just a museum and a memorial, but an event center uh, that that uh, you know that can be utilized uh, for people's events. So uh, the event tomorrow, um, it says here, starts at 10 a.m. This is a, a free event, I believe. The the governor's going to be there. You guys have free parking, live entertainment. There's music, bar, and food, and all that kind of stuff, right? Absolutely. So gates open at 10. The actual ceremony starts at 11. Okay. Um, and uh, the ship again departs at 12:10 p.m. Uh, completely free. Um, there's parking uh, in lot what we call lot one, right off Clinton Street in Camden. Uh, you know we're expecting anywhere from you know a thousand to three thousand people, and we're going to have bars, we're going to have food. Uh, you know you're going to be able to uh, stand pretty much anywhere on the on the public promenade um, and be able to see the the event and obviously see the ship move. Uh, and we'll have about 600 or so seats on the pier itself. Most of the, uh, more than half of those seats will be open to the public and for veterans and uh, for anyone uh, who needs uh, a seat. 
because they can't stand. Uh, we're expecting a big crowd. Um, we're planning for a big crowd. We've been, we have people write to us and tell us that they're flying in uh-huh. from all over the country to either be here tomorrow or to come to one of our dry dock tours. So just the level of mm-hmm. interest um, has been just absolutely incredible. And so we're just incredibly grateful for uh, guys like you who are helping echo our message and talk about the battleship and uh, really keep keep us alive here on, on the Camden waterfront. By the way, Marshall, we were at our um, uh, MMRBQ over the summer by the President Steve show. Side to Edge was in the fall. Uh, yeah. s- the side stage and about every minute and a half somebody <laughs> was firing off rounds <laughs> off of your <laughs> ship. It was scaring the bejesus <laughs> out of us. Is any of that going to be taking place tomorrow? So yeah, well, at the end of the ceremony we'll have uh, three volleys from our starboard side saluting gun. Cool. Which is actually our uh, smallest gun that we still fire. And then when we're moving down river, um, we're going to be firing off a couple shot saluting shots. Uh, the cruiser Olympia across the river in Penn's Landing and Fort Mifflin uh, near the uh, near the airport are going to be firing at us and we're going to be firing back at them <laughs> for a cool little exchange. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, we really expect just like as you guys were talking about when the ship came up the river in 2000, that there are going to be people lying the river in various locations, Sure, um, you know, on both sides of the river. Uh, to watch her go down. I expect it's going to be a very emotional thing to see that underway because, you know, think about uh, the, the history there. And then uh, just a quick question. I assume that the main the main guns are sealed off, correct? Yeah, the 16-inch guns are completely sealed off, uh, not usable. We the, the guns that we you know fire, obviously they're they're blanks. Uh, are the saluting gun, our five-inch gun, and our quad forty uh, Bofors gun, which is actually an original World War II um, gun, anti-aircraft gun from the battleship New Jersey. Cool. My God, I can't imagine what those 16-inch guns sound like. It. I can't even Forget imagine uh-huh. how loud that is. Wow. All right. Well, listen, uh, Marshall, good luck with everything. Uh, we wish you well. And uh, it's it's cool that you guys are doing what you do to keep that alive. It's a beautiful piece of equipment. Thank you both. Really appreciate you having me on. You got it. Anytime. All right. Let's hear it yeah. from Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. CEO Battleship of New Jersey. So. It's a really cool thing. If you've never been there. It's it's pretty awesome. You can sit in, you know, like the captain seat and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, you, the it. access is amazing. And, of course, it also has, um, it ends up on the Haunted Tours yeah. as well because yeah. it's got that history as well. Absolutely. All right, real quick, I'd like to do a couple of shout outs because people have reached out to me. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start with this one. It says, hey, Preston, can you give my daughter Kenzie's cheer team a shout out Upper Marion All-Star Royals in King of Prussia. They are a level six all-girl world's team who just won the UCA Nationals in oh. Disney last weekend. Oh, that's cool. It's the first time in Royals history that they have won UCA. Thank you. That is from uh, Lisa Martini. So, <laughs> shout out to you guys. Congratulations. I grew up with Lisa. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wonderful person. Right. Keeps our streets safe, by the way. Oh, oh really? Yes, officer? she does. Yeah. Excellent. And then here's another one that says, Yo, Presbo, love your show, longtime listener. And I'm the guy that drove up from Delaware and dropped off flaxseed and fiber cereal to help Casey poop. <laughs> March yep. 19th is my big 6 0 birthday. And to celebrate my birthday, I'm having my first ever colonoscopy on March 18th. There you go. So if it's possible to get a shard out around March 19th, I would appreciate it. Rock on. Brian Overby from Newark, Delaware. Wow. Shard out to you, buddy. Hopefully everything went well. I'm sure that it did. Uh, oh, you know what? Since we're on the heels of talking about the Battleship New Jersey and World War II and all the greatness that uh, that was a part of, uh, there's a woman named May, May Creer of Levittown, and she was one of the original yes. Rosie the Riveters. <laughs> Let's go. And wow. next month, Congress is going to give her a medal for it. It's awesome. Uh, yeah. The Rosie the Riveter stuff, I, I, I love. I love. First of all, I love the original campaign and the artwork and the, the artwork is awesome it is yeah. terrific yeah but the, the women who inspired it uh pretty amazing so the uh career who will turn 98 next week is an original rosie the riveter a catch-all term for the women who flooded factories and shipyards during world war ii to build planes ships bombs uh needed to vanquish the nazis in japan as it happened she was an actual riveter because they did all kinds of jobs they did but she literally was a gal a riveter do you remember the movie Swing Shift? Yeah. It was about the the, the Rosie the Riveters. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, exactly. uh, Kurt Russell and uh, Goldie, Goldie Hawn. Yeah. That was a good movie. Uh, she said, Hitler once said, American women were too interested in makeup to work. Well, we showed them what American women were made of. 
Uh, with so many men at war, it fell uh, to women to build up the nation's arsenal, and that opened a previously closed-off opportunity until 1941, uh, Creer said. Uh, it was a man's world. Uh, to gain recognition for her sisters in armaments, uh, Creer has been speaking to veterans groups and active duty service members across the nation as a rosy ambassador. Her message has been a simple one. She said, if we don't get a medal soon, all the rosies will be gone. And after decades of lobbying, she will be accepting the Medal of Honor, the oldest and highest civilian award for herself, as well as for the estimated 12 million to 18 million other rosies, the vast majority of whom are no longer alive. Uh, she is on April 10th is when the medal will be conferred in the U.S. Capitol's Emancipation Hall. Career will be accompanied by uh, about 30 other Rosies who range in age from late 90s to 106 years old. That's pretty amazing. And uh, career credits our friend uh, Senator Bob Casey for pushing through the legislation uh, that made the medal a reality. Cool. So I love it. And I love that, yeah, the, what does it say on the, in the campaign? We can do it. Yes. Uh, with the Rosie. No sad bro. And no sad bro. <laughs> oh, man, I thought I came up with that. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Goes way back. But I thought that was, uh, thank you for passing that, that story along. Awesome. Uh, yeah, oh, no problem. Really, really cool. Uh, here's another thing uh, that Nick passed this one on to me. Uh, the intimacy ban <laughs> that had been in place for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics has been lifted for the 2024 Paris Olympics. And the Olympic Village, where the athletes stay during the event, will be stocked with 300,000 condoms. There's no way you're going to have the Olympics in Paris and, and not, not yeah. allow for you're, a whole bunch of humping. You're talking about people in their absolute peak of physical mm. perfection. Yeah. And Nick, by the and way, you said they cleaned the send they had, but that's only to fill it with lube. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Speaking of lube, I saw this as well. Uh, Cam Soda. An adult entertainment site is joining in on the effort, yes. and they are sending a thousand bottles <laughs> of sixteen and a half ounce gold flake lube, <laughs> which is officially named Gold Metal Personal Lubrication, to Paris. By the way, they, they're the ones who um, uh, sent uh, one thousand five hundred forty gallons of cheese whiz infused lubricant to prevent fans from climbing poles <laughs> in the event of a Super Bowl victory. Was that here? Cheese Whiz, wouldn't that been? Yeah, yeah. Been here. must have been Philly. I guess so, yeah, Whiz Whiz. they yeah. need to use that. Yeah, so, huh. uh, yeah, they, they're the guys that are doing that. So, um, yeah, this is according to uh, Lorraine Marchand, the uh -huh. director of the village, uh, the uh, uh, Olympic village. Marchand said uh, that they are preparing for 14,250 residents at the village and are aiming to have 300,000 condoms for athletes there. I got. I, I uh, shared this story on um, Instagram yesterday, the day before, put up in my stories, and uh, somebody, a listener, replied to me and said that uh, she was friendly with an Olympic athlete, a man, and she didn't want to name names, um, but uh, this was at the Olympics eight years ago, and um, the man, it was just, there was just sex everywhere, yeah. right? And so there's a lot of back and forth. And this dude, this one athlete, was having sex with another athlete, and uh, that one athlete had the, the the woman had to leave and go do an interview with Katie Couric. So the dude the you know, the dude ends up banging the roommate of the first athlete. Oh no! So he he was plowing through the entire village, and wow. I was just like, you know what? Good for them. And uh, what about you? <laughs> well, you know they're in the yeah. prime of like sure. you know, physical specimens, and uh, they're all confined to this village. And and what I've also heard is that they just get bored. Like when they're not doing their yeah. events, so they have to kill time. And what yeah. better way to do it than having sex? I thought you were gonna say bang Katie Couric. That yeah. would be pretty well, cool. She didn't end wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> That's my girl. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so providing condoms at the Olympics has been a tradition since the 1988 Seoul Olympics. That's when they did that. It was an effort to raise awareness about uh, HIV and AIDS. And uh, Tokyo officials still handed out 150,000 condoms, even though the intimacy rules prevented any scenarios to use them. So they handed those out anyway. Just for the hell of it. Yeah, why not? But this time around, they got 300,000. And they, uh, you can you can bang away if you want to. So. <laughs> Where are, all right, so these ones are in Paris. Where are the next Winter Olympics, and then the Summer Olympics after that? I think aren't the next Winter Olympics in uh, back in Japan? Are they okay? Uh, I'll look it up. No idea. Have you ever had a desire to travel and go to the Olympics? I've been. Oh my god! Yeah, yes. I went in '84 in LA. Yeah, it was really. I mean, I was a kid, but uh, that was when I got to be on the same plane as Dr. J, and it was. Uh, um, I saw Edwin Moses run, and I saw. Um, the women's um, you, uh, marathon in the Olympics. I saw a baseball game at Dodger Stadium in the Olympics. It was it was terrific. I loved every second of it. Yeah, I've always wanted to go to the Olympics, and uh, I told you guys this story before, but uh, I was like 
I mean, there. I was, when I was working for NBC 10, uh, NBC National, I had a connection and it was when the Atlant- the uh, Olympics were in Atlanta. Ooh, right, Nick? Yeah. 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 That was 96. Yes. And so I was going. Like, I was I was going to be there. I was going to go. I had a connection and... Uh, the, the bombing? The, uh, no, 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 no. The, the, the guy was, the guy was down there, right? He he was there and, and getting everything yeah. together. He, he was, he was a high up at NBC. He got drunk and he insulted uh, his boss. Oh, and no. They fired him and I had no connection. Oh, and I, I didn't even have man. like my, you know, where I was supposed to be, what time, like it hadn't really gotten to that. And so that was <sighs> it. Stupid bastard. Yeah. My <laughs> older brother and sister were at the Atlanta games. And then when that bombing happened, because it happened late at night, I remember I woke my dad up. Like, hey, there was a bombing, you know, and that scared the hell out of him because this is 1996. Sure. There was no way to like check no. up on them. Yeah. You know, there's no, you couldn't text them or call them or anything like Terrifying. That. Yeah. yeah. So hey, see, here's your answer. I'm sorry to interrupt, Nick. The uh, Winter Olympics will be in Milan and uh, Cortina di Amperizo hey. in Italy. And then the Summer Olympics back here in the good old U.S., Los Angeles, California. Uh, from uh, the 14th to the 30th of July, 2028. We can then, broadcast, right? Yeah, and then in Brisbane, I guess oh, after boy. that. Um, I would love to go to that, but you don't get to pick and choose which events you go to, right? Like, because if, go, if I'm not going to go, if I'm not going to go to a no, you, you swimming and or diving event, like, I don't want to go. I think you can, you you can request, right? You're not guaranteed, obviously, you're going to get in, No, right? but, but you do know ahead of time. Uh, where, I mean, I think people go right, and right. Then they'll get what they, you know, what they can get. Wait, I need a correction. It was not Atlanta. It was Salt Lake City. Oh, okay. okay. I was wondering. Yeah. Guy, yeah. Um, okay. A guy I swam with in high school, he is the women's swim coach. Like, uh, he coached Katie Ledecky. Wait, over... Ask him if he can get us tickets. I should. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Greg, we haven't talked since 1993. Uh, would you mind hooking me up with front row tickets to the Olympics? But yeah, he was uh, Katie Ledecky's coach, I, I believe at Stanford. And then last summer Olympics, he, was, he became the women's uh, swim coach. I don't think it would be... I, I don't think I would enjoy it. I, I think it wouldn't be as interesting as it is on television. You know what well, I mean? Because you know, it's, it's constant. They're going from event to event. Yeah. And if you're in one place, and depending on if you get good seats or not. Now, it would be kind of cool to be around and see the Olympic Village and maybe catch a glimpse of some of the athletes. But maybe I sleep think... sleep with somebody. I th- But I think it's so big yeah. that I think as an attendee, it might be a lot would get lost on you, I think. Uh, I, I, I think I it would be sprawling. I, I think if you had like crazy VIP access and could have all that available to you, it might be cool. Well, so which, which, which would you rather see, summer or winter Olympics? Probably winter Olympics. I find them a little more exciting. I, I, huh. it's, I'd love to see some of that. So I think I kind of agree. I toured the, uh, the village in um, Calgary, Canada, and they hosted them in... Uh, Maybe the '90s and um, or no '88. Anyway, you can stand on top of the uh, ski slope where you know f- where they do the, the long jump yeah. and um, uh, oh crap! Oh, so 2026, uh, Philly gets uh, the the All Star Game. We get the U.S. Open at Marion, yep. and then the the World Cup is in the U.S. and Canada and um, Mexico in in 2026, and then the Olympics are coming in 28. Are you thinking, Preston, in advance? You want to try to get to the U.S. Open or anything along those lines? Nah, you know what I've done. I've I've done a couple of majors before, <clears throat> and I I have found. While it's neat to say I was there and I got to see Rory McIlroy as close right. as, he, as you yeah. are to me right now, and that's really cool. It's so spread out, and I would yeah. just rather I'd rather you want to watch it, on TV. I, I, I would. You get so much more out of it on TV. You can TV. drink more. You can drink more. Uh, you want, but it's twenty twenty six. We're talking about Nick? Yeah. Well, and also your book. You're going to handbag bingo. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Design oh, yeah. bag bingo. That whole yeah, 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 that year. One. I got to yeah. forget about that, <laughs> that whole year. <laughs> Uh, but I've become more of a watch it on TV guy. Yeah. I know it's boring. Oh, it's a lot. You're but, you're a sports cook. But, but when when you when you go to these events too, there are some things that that you don't think about. Like like parking is yeah. way away. Yeah. You got to catch shuttles. Uh, that takes up some of the time. Then you got to jockey for position to to make sure that you're mm-hmm. you know not stuck in the back and yeah. not seeing anything and. Uh, it's just, I don't know. I've, I've been spoiled by the access you get on television. Yeah, but I want to go see, like, an Olympic-level diving event because I've never seen that. Like, I've only seen it at, like, the high school level. And right. I just, I want to, you know, be able to see that in person, even though, man, the camera angles, they like, they follow yeah. all amazing. the way into the pool. Like, yeah. it's it's pretty badass it's stuff. It's crazy. Um, Preston, there was a, a tournament uh, at Aronimink a few years ago. I think it was maybe the BMW Classic. Yeah. and. Um, you mentioned parking. My friend Matt and I went. We had to park 
uh, at the by where we do the blood drive in Oaks. Yeah, <laughs> and then they drove us all the way from Oaks. Oh, and it was a shuttle, and you know they made it convenient or whatever. But like, it was not quick, and it was not right. close no. by. Do you all. remember people selling their driveways or oh, renting yeah, their sure. driveways yeah, for parking? At that time, I had my Vespa, and I rode my Vespa down there through the barricades into there was like uh, some sort of construction. I guess either oh, no, they the were pagans are here. Either they were building houses or or a couple of houses were under construction, and I just ducked my Vespa right next nice. to a giant dumpster, and I walked across the street. That was oh, that was. So great. Because hey. I'm not going to drive the Oaks. Yeah. Uh, Leslie wants to comment because she's been to a Summer Olympics before. Hi, uh, Leslie. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Steve. It's Leslie, your old man. Oh, Leslie. Yes. Yeah. Are you, are you, you're, you're going to the Olympics? Hello? Yeah. Hi. Do we lose Hi, you? Leslie. Uh, you're going to the Olympics? Yeah, so, by the way, Steve, it's your old neighbor, Les. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah, yeah we covered it, yeah. that. Yeah, sorry, sorry. yeah that's okay. Yeah, doesn't matter. So Who is this? I entered a lottery <laughs> and was chosen, and when you entered the lottery, you were able to select um, three different sports. We selected ones that we could actually afford, because as you can imagine, like, gymnastics, swimming, and yeah. all that is, is a little more expensive. So we selected tennis. Um, we're going to soccer, and we are going to boxing. So That's awesome. Ah. Actually, those are three yeah. great. Steve, yeah. this sounds good. a lot like your old neighbor, it's Leslie. Leslie. Is it? Is it? <laughs> we know Leslie. <laughs> we, she, she also knows about birds. Yes, I do know a lot about birds. Oh, um, and the thing to remember that you guys probably know, like, not everything is in Paris. So we have to actually leave Paris yep. and go to Lyon, I believe, for the boxing match. So we'll be having to travel throughout um, France as well. So, Leslie, how long are you going to be away for this? We're going to be away for 13 days. Okay. All right. It's going to be awesome. I mean, listen, obviously Paris has enough to recommend it anyway, but, but uh, right, right. yeah, this is going to be pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah, I'm a little nervous because it's going to be crowded and hot, but it's a once in a lifetime, so we figured we'd go for it. All right. Any particular birds you want to see while you're out there, <laughs> Leslie? Well, you know, okay. pigeons are pretty common. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And they all have a thick sauce on them. Thank you, Leslie. Appreciate that. All right. Well, so I guess there's some choice. You have some choice in the matter. Yeah. yeah. I for completely forgot about gymnastics. I automatically oh my God, just go yeah. swimming and yeah. diving. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God. That would be, that's, I think, the most exciting thing about the Summer Olympics are the, yeah. the gymnastics because um, they're insane. I'm yes. sorry. Are they doing flag football this year at the oh, Summer Olympics? I wasn't, is that there, There's talk event? of it, and I, and I thought it got approved, but I wasn't sure. I, I don't know if it got approved for this year or the next Summer Olympics. They've been, they have approved some interesting things over the past few years, and they've also uh, excluded Removed, a few yeah. different things, like, like Greco-Roman wrestling. What are the original? Greco-Roman wrestling is one of the foundational sports yeah. of the Olympa friggin' X. And they got rid of it. <laughs> Olympa friggin' X. Uh, flag football won't be until 2028 in, okay. L in L.A. Is golf... I forget. Do you think we'll ever return to the original way they conducted them naked? Naked. Wouldn't that be fun? Maybe, maybe I we mean, should do that. Who that'd wouldn't be, want to watch that? That'd yes. be crazy. Golf is uh, in the Olympics for men and women. Okay. Is um is judo still in? I think that that got taken out, uh, Steve. No, nope, there we go. There goes in. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I got put back in. Cronum. Took it out, cleaned it, and then put it back in. Okay. What's that? Cronum. What? <laughs> You took it out, cleaned it, and put it back in. Yeah, you said they'd taken it out. I said, yeah, yeah but um, but it's back in there. So okay, took it out, cleaned it, <laughs> buffed it, put it back in. Taekwondo, it was... trampoline, dude. Oh, oh, trampoline's cool. That is. You know what else is cool? Uh, is that one thing where it's just laser like, tag? Laser tag. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. No, it's it's a gymnastics event, but it's just like one long bouncy mat. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, they 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 go up. They they're like. Mirror, 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 I think it must be one of those bounce parks. Yes. And this guy's doing full level flips oh. very effectively. Like 300 pounds? I got to see dude that. is enormous. And have you seen, not to go off on a mega, mega, mega tangent, have you seen the new super huge trampolines that are, here he is, Preston. 
Yeah, look on the screen. Oh, wow. this guy. Big guy doing flips. Yeah. Yep. Um. So super huge trampoline. Yeah, and I've they 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 just started to make the rounds, and you're seeing them in in in, in certain parks and stuff. I think you can even get them residentially, but it is a super wide trampoline, so you have a lot of area to cover, mm -hmm. and it seems to um go. There's a little bit of a of a, of a uh, an indentation or a deep side, for lack of a better phrasing, hmm. and and uh, the people can. Skyrocket off this wow. thing. So no. wrestling's back this year. Oh, oh it is! Yay! Yeah, they, they took it out, cleaned it, and put it back. They did, yeah. That's oh, boy. <laughs> I'll make this work. If it's <laughs> yeah. I it worked a little bit better that time, you gotta admit. <laughs> Just keep at All it. Right, well, I think that's the last time I'm gonna do that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I took it out, cleaned it, and put it back in. Question, is our, is our guest uh, coming up shortly? Yeah, as a matter of okay. fact, let me just see, because I was asked, I asked them to text me when they get here. Nine or nine... Casey, on the way. We're just taking it out, cleaning it, and putting it back in. <laughs> See, it works. Totally works. Totally works. Um, I don't know if they're here yet. They were okay. supposed to arrive oh. very, very soon. You okay. know what I didn't realize? Um, a, a, tix, a tixter? A tixter. A listener. Sure, why not? You're just yeah. a tixter. Oh, my God. My brain, I'm in such a fog today. I apologize. Did but you I, hear my Parks Casino uh, no, no, yeah, library that was, earlier? It was a good one. It was amazing. Strong. Anyway, a tixter. Uh, reminded me that um, it's the 80th anniversary of D-Day in France this summer too. So June, That's right. June 6th, uh, 1944 was D-Day and so they're going to be celebrating that and then on wow. the heels of that at the 80 year anniversary. Uh, that's when the Olympics kick and off. And Long Island this year, it's going to be D, D. Snyder Day. What? Uh, wow. <laughs> D. Snyder Day. D. D. Snyder. <laughs> D. Snyder Day. <laughs> All right, well, listen, I think we should take a quick break and uh, come back in a moment because yes, we have uh, Moose the wrestlers, yes. TNA Wrestling is going to be stopping by uh, to chat a tad bit. So uh, he knows the thing, uh, too, about athletic prowess. We'll come back with him and more, and you stay with us. All right? Be right back. Forever. Do with the uh, ninety-three-three WMMR. Thank you very much, Kathy. We are expecting the arrival of uh, Moose from TNA Wrestling. Any update? Uh, yeah, no supposed updates to be here yet. Right now. So why don't you just? Uh, why don't you forget the Moose <laughs> for, a for a moment? For a moment, yeah. Uh, hopefully he comes along. Um, yeah, we'd like to meet him. Let me know. Give me a prize uh, if they contact you because. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do otherwise. I, I did see a couple of things that might be worth mentioning. There is a, excuse me, um, there's a thing called the Devil Comet. The, <laughs> yes. Uh, that is uh, making an appearance, a rare galactic phenomenon the size of Mount Everest that can only be seen by humans about every 70 years uh, might possibly be visible with the naked eye as it's heading in our general direction. Think about, just think about that. So, you know, the size of Mount Everest. Mm -hmm. And you know something significantly smaller could take out the entire planet were it to collide with us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the especially bright extraterrestrial treat, formerly known as treat. Comet 12P Pons Brooks, is making its way through the intersolar system and can currently be seen with a telescope or binoculars. So if you have binoculars, you can do that. By the way, you've mentioned this a, a, a few times. If you get a cranking set or even a moderately good set of binoculars, yeah. you'll be surprised what you can see. Yeah, especially taking a look at like the moon and stuff yeah. like that. Oh, it's yeah. really, really cool. So um, uh, down the shore, Preston had his telescope out and we were looking at uh, Saturn. And was the other one was Jupiter? It Jupiter, okay. Yeah, with the moons. Um, and Juniper. so we were we were looking, and, and Carter was really good at like fixing the telescope on Saturn, but you could see it with the binoculars too. And what yeah. was even cooler is being able to see the rings. The rings, yeah, it's right everywhere. It's the money shot. If if the universe or our solar system is porn, mm -hmm. then the rings are the money shot. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, by the end of March, the comet will be would may be able to be seen with the naked eye uh, at dusk in the northern hemisphere against the constellation Aries in the western horizon. Do you remember when uh, when Hale Bop absolutely made its appearance? Yeah, I bought that, my sneakers. I got in my bunk bed. Yeah, there yeah, was there yeah. was the Heaven's Gate cult uh, all killed themselves because they thought a spacecraft was coming to take them away. <laughs> Uh, but it was so cool to be able to, to look up because it was early, early in the morning when yes. you could see it. And I would come into work for a show. And I just stand outside for a little while and look at it. It was amazing. There is, um, the, I love that notion, that feeling of you know this this massive. We don't even the boundaries are have, it will you know endless. There are no boundaries. Yeah, yeah. and so you you know it, it puts your place in the universe. It reminds you that 
you can relax on some things. You know, mm-hmm. the, 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 the trouble and turmoil of your daily existence pales in comparison. I like to think about, like, when I, when I was up looking at that comet, and, and I'm like, from up there, where yeah. I'm looking right now, that's real. And, and what it must actually be like to really be there, there. on that location because it's... Oh, my God, I can see Preston. Because it's, uh, <laughs> it's not fake. It's, you know, it's something that's, yeah. that, that I can it see from there. Real. But, but, that, that it is real. That is real. Well, Preston, you raise a good point <laughs> because there is a, 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 there is a, um, a telescope that um, where you don't look through it in real time. It is a... Um, it it takes photographs of where you are. So where you are, it will it it does the searching and it will um, employ whatever uh, onboard AI or whatever is is working and it will secure a picture of these celestial events that are literally where you are, but you're not looking at it through the eyepiece. And I've looked at this thing and I've flirted with it for a while and I'm like, it's just not the same. Hmm. It's just not the same than yeah. looking for by some reasoning in my mind. You're looking through the eyepiece of a telescope, and you're sort of connected. Do you, yeah. Does that make sense? I know what you mean. I love the fact that they're discovering new stuff all the time. And, and for example, with this uh, the Hale-Bot press, then they they only discovered it two years before it was visible. So it's like, pretty amazing. Wow. And, and nowadays they're discovering exoplanets all the time, and you know, habitable planets in other solar systems and galaxies far, far away. That to me, that's. Incredible that that stuff is still being discovered. Well, the reason they, they call it the Devil Comet is because it looks like it has uh, horns sticking out of it. It's a rock and roll comet. It's, yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. rock on. Uh, so through the end of March, you might be able to see it uh, very soon with the naked eye, but more than likely you're going to need at least binoculars. Can you yourself be naked when you look at it, or is that... Uh, very much so. It's highly recommended to people at NASA. Because sure. uh, I usually am in my backyard. would like you to be buck naked yeah, while yeah. you do that. Our guest is here. Yeah! Uh, he's sitting in the seat right next to me, and he's going to be performing Friday and Saturday night. He's got bouts uh, with TNA Wrestling, and it will be at the 2300 Arena. Please welcome, and you got to love people who just have one word yes. for their name. Yeah. Moose is yeah. here. Yes. Why don't you forget the moose? Moose. Thank, thank for a moment. Thanks I walked for- in, and you guys were talking about planets. <laughs> and, um, I don't know if you knew, I have my own planet. You, you have, have your own, own planet. Yeah. Nice. Okay. That's, that's where I'm built from. It's called Moose Nation. <laughs> <laughs> is the planet on which you were born. Almost like yeah, Crypt- yeah, Krypton yeah. to Superman, yeah. Moose Nation has yielded you. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh Moose, you're a you're a you are a specimen. You are a very large individual. And uh we this past and you're a former football player. Yeah. Uh this past weekend we were in uh Florida for spring training for baseball and one of our football friends was down there, Hollis Thomas, who used to play for the Eagles. Okay. And uh, we were talking, I was looking at Hollis, I'm talking, he's a very large guy too. And I'm like, man, does travel, being the size that you are, is it tough getting on planes and stuff oh, like horrible. that? horrible. Yeah? Um, if you don't get like a first class seat or at least... Um, you can't be comfortable. Plus. Or the exit. You, you, yeah, you have to, you, you listen, you would not be able to travel at all. I mean, it'd be um, ridiculous. So, true story, um, with my contract with um, TNA, I'm allowed to do indie shows right. like other little indie companies and i've canceled a lot of shows on the spot because i got to the airport and looked at my seat and i had a middle seat <laughs> yeah and no I was, I no i'm not flying to the city the rest yeah. of the day <laughs> I will, and, yeah i'll so guarantee I'll, you that i've the, done that a few times thank yeah. you for the yeah. person yes. who might have been yeah. sitting exactly. in, the, yeah. in the window seat next to you man. Yeah. Jesus, could you imagine you're sitting there you're like what oh my god yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. i've um, even done it for a company a guy um a company in the uk this was years ago um i told him when he booked my seat I was like, if you don't book me Delta or Delta affiliate, because I usually get upgraded to first class on most of my flights. I was like, if you don't book me Delta or Delta affiliate company, um, you have to get me a first class seat for whoever you, and he was like, okay, cool, cool. So I received my ticket or whatever. I was pissed off. I was like, you know what? When I get there, I have a middle seat now, but when I get to the airport, I'm going to try and change it to, like, yeah. a Comfort Plus or at least a Mercy Row exit. So I get to the airport, checking in or at the gate, and it was like, oh, it's a, it's a full flight. We can't change your seat. I just didn't go to the U.K. that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can show up injured. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. we had one time, and we're not anywhere near your size, but President and I were on a flight. It was to Ireland. Not only were we... <laughs> We were we were jammed in, yeah. But 
we were those seats that are right up against the back, the bulkhead that you couldn't recline. Yep. So we sat up like, you know, completely arched out the whole thing. And by the time we got off, we were crippled. Right. Yeah. It, it, Flying it, across the Atlantic. Yeah, I mean, it, it just, like, just imagine work. like my job is literally landing on my back and taking bumps, <laughs> what we call in, in our business. And getting hit, like who wants to sit for five, six hours like this, not being able? Yeah, to it's impossible. Your legs, you could get hurt that way. So yeah. it's like, um, and promoters, whoever's listening to this, be smarter, book moose. <laughs> First class only. Oh, yeah. I wanted to uh, ask you, reading uh, about you and, and reading about your, uh, you love the, you love the sport that you're in. You love, and yeah, obviously you have a, a long uh, football career as well. But uh, you were talking about uh, Brock Lesnar mm -hmm. and uh, his ability, you call it, to, to sell the match. Mm -hmm. And ex Explain, and you're a big Brock Lesnar fan, correct? Yeah, Explain yeah. what you, you mean by that. His, what, what does that mean, selling the match? Um, what he's really good at and what I pride myself on really being really good at is whoever I'm wrestling when a, a, a fan is watching it believes that whoever I'm wrestling at any moment could beat me. Yeah, and that's what I mean by selling the match. I mean, I'm a big, like you said, I'm an imposing figure, right? Six six, two hundred and sixty pounds. Sometimes I'm wrestling guys who are five ten, a hundred and seventy pounds, mm -hmm. and my job is to make you believe that this little guy has a chance. To <laughs> you got, you have to believe it. Yeah, it has to be believable. So yeah, and so I pride myself on being really good at selling to making the audience you guys believe that this little guy could take off this mammoth you know what I'm saying? the reason why I, I it caught my eyes because i saw a video recently it was brock lesnar and rick flair i think it was yeah. and rick flair is my president's a big rick flair fan by the way uh that's obviously much older you know yeah, but he's like but, he was like 60 yeah but he but was selling Brock it. made it seem yeah. like this 60-year-old man who's about to retire at any moment, probably in the next five minutes, <laughs> could actually beat me. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. like a skill. That's a skill I'm a sure. lot of wrestlers in today's era don't have is the is the skill of selling. Mm -hmm. So football, um, you uh, Patriots, Rams, Colts, um, you, you you made the rounds, right, with, with no, those? Falcons also. The Falcons has also. Yeah. So, um uh, and obviously, um, a sport you love. I'm curious because, and, and we've dismissed this notion again that that wrestlers like you this can get injured. You guys get injured all the time. All the time. Yeah, all the time. Compare and contrast football injury, level of injury, frequency of injury with injury in wrestling. Uh, I mean, injury is injury at the end of the day. But the reason why I believe it's worse with wrestling is. Um, a lot of times, like in football, um, you're making millions of dollars. So you have a training staff who is protecting the assets. So you sprain the an ankle and they're like, oh, you're out for eight weeks. Right. Where in wrestling, um, I mean, to be honest, there's no wrestler that's making what, not even in TNA and WWE and AEW, there's no wrestler that's making what NFL players are making, you know? Mm -hmm. So in that sense, when somebody rolls an ankle, there's no, oh, let's hold you for <laughs> eight months because right. at the end of the day, we have to sell tickets. So, like, mm -hmm. we need you to sell tickets. Like, we need Moose to be in Philadelphia to wrestle to sell tickets for fans to come see Moose perform, you know? Mm -hmm. So sometimes, I mean, a lot of times in wrestling, you have to suck it up and... Just play hurt. Play hurt, like, yep. yeah. So but the thing is, yeah. And, and, then, and, and then in wrestling, you might be in a, in a storyline that you really need to be involved. So if it's not your arm being cut off or <laughs> your leg being cut off, you might have to just push through that injury. And then um, wrestling is one of those things that, like, I know if I'm going to a match with a bum shoulder, I, I plan the match, right? So I know what I can take and what I can't take. And... Um, so if my shoulder's bummed, I know I could tell my opponent, please watch out for this and take care of this, take care of me because I'm not feeling great today. Mm -hmm. Where in football, yo, the guy in front of you don't give a <laughs> Yeah. Give yeah, yeah. A he's he's got to yeah. take you out. Yeah. yeah. His job is to take you out. In fact, if you told him that information, he's probably going to target that more, right? <laughs> right. So, right. Yeah. That's, it's interesting. You were an offensive lineman? Yeah, I was yeah. an offensive lineman. Yeah. And, and so... 
worst injury you ever got in football? Where did you get a bad injury in football? Oh yeah, I had multiple shoulder surgeries in um, football. So um, luckily, it was just my shoulders that I had problems with in football, and um, thus far, I mean, and obviously concussions. Um, but that's everybody in football that gets those. Um, but in wrestling, I've been lucky. I haven't really had a serious injury that had to put me out for a long period of time. Who'd you grow up watching? Who was uh, your Who were your favorites? I could name probably like uh, this whole this show would consist of me just naming wrestlers. <laughs> <and> <laughs> like, oh, the wrestlers I grew up watching. But my favorite wrestler of all time. It's funny I tell people this, and they get they're like so confused. My favorite wrestler and my least, the wrestler I, I hated the most or di disliked the most are the same person. Oh, well, wow. Okay. He <laughs> gets it. He gets it. Rick, Rick, Rick Flair. Yep. No. Was, that was, not, that he, was he, me. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. My favorite wrestler of all time is Razor Ramon. Huh. And the wrestler I dislike the most is Scott Hall. <laughs> Which they're the same, same person. person. Same yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's two, two, different, two different times uh, in their career. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. And so how? Funny. So with that, and and your persona, your you know, I, like I think of like a, a comedian trying to find their voice on stage. I, the onus on you to find that who you are, to find to define who you are, how the audience is going to receive you in wrestling. It's a fascinating process. Yeah. Did you have a lot of input, or did you just instinctively go, "I'm going to be this"? Um. See the thing with wrestling, you're um, you're always learning. There's no like even now I've been doing this for ten, eleven years, and I'm still learning every day. Um, I for the most part, I, for the most part, I know who Moose is, but Moose is always still evolving. Like um, just like wrestling evolves over the years, I have to evolve with it. So right, um, there might be things that I've seen in a movie and be like, oh, I like this guy, this bad guy in this movie, and there's something that he plays that the Moose character doesn't have, and I need to cool. take some characteristics from him to add to my character. So um, it's still a work in progress, um, but yeah. Uh, Moose is a great name. Uh, one of our, our producers, his uh, nickname is Moose, uh, Connor in the other room. and uh, Must be badass. <laughs> I'm saying. Uh, were you <laughs> Was Moose a nickname of yours? Did you take it from that, or did you have other um, Yes. Um, okay. Michael Vick actually gave me the name Moose. Oh, wow. Yeah, my rookie in the NFL. And, okay. Um, crazy thing, ironically, when he gave me the name, I hated it. Um, he made everybody call me that. I was so pissed <laughs> off. <laughs> now I'm making a lot of money using the name Moose. So. All right. There you go. You know, I, I thought earlier in oh, the conversation yeah. that you were uh, referring to Moose as yourself in the third person, but you're not. It, it, Moose is a character that's a, very independent of who you are as an yeah, individual. Moose is that right? Is a, Moose is a character. Moose is not who I am as a person, but... A character that I play. So when you when you figured that out uh, that it's a character, or, when did you figure that out? Like when did you realize that I, I can't be me? I have to be somebody else. Um. So there's a term we use in our business called a mark. Yeah. Um. And I stopped being a mark like maybe three years ago. I don't know what a mark is. Um. A mark is um. Hmm. Like a placeholder? Ross, well, how would you... That's the thing. The, a mark has so many different... Multiple meanings? Yeah, and they're yeah. all negative. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so it like, has like multiple a, meanings, but they're all negative. It's like... Um, a grifter like 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 will go after you a mark. You take yourself too seriously. Right. Okay. Um, um, you... you like you think you're you're the gimmick. Um, like you think you're who you play. Okay. And for a long time, I thought... I was Moose. Like, yeah, and yeah. I had to really sit down and think about him. Like, you know what? Uh, Moose is a character that I play, and that character is different than who Quinn Ojanaka is as a person. Okay. Um, so once you put that in perspective, it makes your job, it makes you being great at your job so much easier. I think it would also okay. help keep your sanity, yeah, too. Yeah, it helps because keep your sanity, you, yeah. Because I, I think... I remember years ago, and you're talking about some of the guys you were talking about that you were fans of. I think, you know, I mean, we, we've always had wrestlers come through here, and they're always fantastic on air, and they know how to play a crowd, and, and they respect the audience and all that. But you've seen some wrestlers where it just seemed to take over them, yeah. and they ended up in a bad way because of it. Like, yeah, I mean, in our business, like, for instance, um, in our business, a lot of people hate sometimes that they have to lose. Mm. and they take it so serious, like, oh, my God, I can't believe. And it's like, dude, you're playing a character <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. on a show. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, 
Quinn Ojanaka isn't losing. Yeah. Your character is losing. Yeah. It's like it's kind of like you giving The Rock a script, and in the script he dies at the end. He's like, oh no, I, there's no way I could take the script. <laughs> like, Rock, Dwayne Johnson isn't dying. Right. 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 Whoever right. the guy you're playing in the uh. script is dying. And yeah. once, and I was one of those guys, um, a mark, where um, I hated losing. Um, I had to win every match. Yeah. Um, I had to be in the top spot in every match. And once I put things in perspective and actually understood what wrestling is and understood what our writers are doing and the whole process of wrestling, and um, it, it made my job a lot easier and it made me realize that, um, you know what, some things don't matter and as long as... When the person is happy, that's all that matters. Yeah, and if the audience and the and, audience is yeah. routinely more love it, and more importantly, they as long as it. the audience keep tuning in, yeah, then I'm doing my job right. Yeah. More importantly, the writers are doing their job right. Right. So. If you're just tuning in, it's uh, Moose who is here. Uh, TNA Impact Live is taking place at the 2300 Arena this weekend, Friday and Saturday, both nights, 7 p.m. And you can get tickets at uh, TNAWrestling.com. I wanted to ask you something, Moose, about the practicality of, of wrestling. So you came from the world of football. You're used to getting hitting. You're getting used to knock, knocking people around and being knocked around. Mm -hmm. But it's a totally different thing. Uh, jumping from you know five feet off the ground, landing on your back, and and doing those moves before you got into pursuing this as a career, did you have any? Did you work on falling or anything like that? Uh, um, yeah. Um, train on that, you know, tumbling and stuff like that. So, just like every wrestler could probably tell you the exact same thing I'm about to tell you. Before I became a wrestler as a young kid, I used to wrestle all my brothers and cousins. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, Things that you don't realize when you're a big wrestling fan as myself is um, the more you watch it, the more you learn how to do things without actually even having to go to to train and okay. learn. So once I went to train and to become a pro wrestler, some of these things that they were trying to show me already knew because of years of watching, years of playing around with brothers and cousins trying out these things so it was almost like embedded into my you're head, such a you fan at that point yeah 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 if you're to jump off say the top turnbuckle and and you know land on your back or oh, hurts it hurts <laughs> yeah. okay yeah because yeah. it, it kind of looks it doesn't look like it's phasing you guys at all yeah. i mean the people who tell me that um wrestling is fake that's exactly what i tell them to go do stand six feet <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. Stand for six feet and jump in the, in the <laughs> ring and land on your back and let's see how your back feels. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, landing on my feet would yeah. kill me yeah. from six feet up. Yeah. I, I remember the yeah. first time I was up close to a professional wrestling match. And oh, I was, yeah. And I was, you hear the bodies hitting, you see the blood. There's no, there's no, you know, uh, magic taking place and you're seeing all this. Uh, it, it is a punishing sport, but I'll tell you what, we say it all the time. You'll never see a more motivated audience, a more if if yeah. the beat like you are stepping up and saying, "I'm going to sell this and make it work." The audience is in the palm of your hand. Right. What, what does that What does that feel like to know those people are just riveted by what you're doing and you you're controlling how they're going to react? I feel like more than a paycheck, the payoff for me is sometimes, most of the time, the crowd interaction to what you're doing mm -hmm. um there's a popular chant that you get in wrestling when the fans think you're having a good match and they chant this is awesome oh and, really yeah, yeah okay and um for me that is more of a payoff than my bi-weekly checks okay. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. me hearing those fans chant this is awesome it's almost that they're appreciating you putting your body on the line for them and they love it. So, yeah, that's a, that's a that's huge cool. payoff for me. The things that, that get me live at an event are uh, the open hand slaps. <laughs> yeah, Because yeah. that, uh -huh. yeah. there's nothing fun about that. So I'll tell you another thing about that people don't realize about the um, the chops. That's what we call it. Okay. Um, the chops hurt the guy, at least for me, it hurts the guy giving it more than the guy taking it. Really? So people only realize, oh, my God, his chest yeah. just feel like, but what about my hand? Yeah. <laughs> the hand slap is, yeah. um, it hurts my hand. Uh, yeah. Probably just as much as his chest is hurting, my hand is hurting. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a big chopper. I throw a bunch of chops in my match, and there's been times after my match 
where I looked at my hand and it's red. Jeez. Really? Like, and just the bent squeeze my hand to make a fist that hurts. Wow. Yeah. All right, I want to ask you about your signature move, the lights out. Uh, and, and, you know, getting a signature move is part of being a star in mm -hmm. wrestling. And, and people like it. Was this... Did you come up with this on your own, or was that a collaborative effort? And um, what is it, by the way, because I don't know what the Lights Out is. Lights Out is a flipping spear. So mm. I I tackle somebody, and right as I tag them, I do a front flip. Okay. Um, um, another thing about wrestling, nothing we do is ever created by us. They're, I mean, wrestling's been going on for, what, 100 Forever. years? Forever, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. So somebody created something and that was passed along, that was passed along, that was seen in a VHS, that was seen on YouTube or, mm -hmm. or a movie. DVD that was seen by me and I decided, oh, I could do that and make it better, so. Okay. How much, you, you, you've mentioned the writers a number of times and, and obviously the, there, there are these storylines. How much input do you have? Can you go to the writers? Can you suggest a storyline? Uh, how malleable is that? Um, that's one thing. great thing about TNA is um, they actually listen to some of the guys. I won't say every wrestler, but um, some of the top wrestlers on the show, they listen to their feedback on what they think some of the storylines should be. Um, so that's one thing I love about TNA. That's why I've been um, with TNA for so long and... Um, because I have some creative input on the character Moose. Right, you take you can take more ownership of it. Yeah. So, uh, are you you're turning forty this year? Is that the? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm turning forty. I'm yeah. A, I'm an old man, but in, you don't um, look it. Yeah. Is I tell people this all all the time. I was like, I might be forty, but before my matches, I feel like I'm twenty five. Yeah. Yeah. So, now, after my matches, I feel like I'm 62. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, you're in great shape. You obviously have to maintain all that. But I'm, I'm wondering because you know you've got the you've got the personality, you've got the football history, you've got the this. Um, you know, down the road. I mean, listen, I, people will ask me. I'm I'm, I'm older. Uh, you know, uh, about retiring. This is what I want to do. I want to keep doing it. What, what's what's your? Do you have a? You're playing the long game. or You're just playing it. You know, close to the best now. Um, I'm. Definitely playing the long game. Um, I definitely have a, a plan B for when wrestling is done. Um, I, I I do know that after I'm done with in ring wrestling, I do want to stay in the business of wrestling somehow. Maybe as a writer or as an agent producer. Um, something in wrestling is. Um, I always want to be a part of wrestling because it's the only thing that I really am in love with yeah um, that's great and i've been in love with it ever since i started watching it when i was eight years old so yeah. um i think once my in ring once i hang the boots up i still want to do something in wrestling was there anything because any anybody anytime somebody enters into <clears throat> a career that they've always wanted to go into uh, they'll find out the things about it they didn't know and it's like oh man <laughs> that kind of ruined that little part for me uh, I know you love wrestling, but was there anything once you got into the business you were like, it kind of, you know, I don't like this. A little disappointing. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, my gear choice. Um, yeah. I hate putting on and taking off my gear. Yeah. yeah. So I kind of wish I, I went to John Cena route and wore <laughs> jeans and a t shirt. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> I could just show up to work and what I'm going to wrestle with. Yeah, right. So that's probably the most. Um, yeah. Putting on my gear and taking off my gear is the worst thing about wrestling. Mm. Okay. All right. Where do you live now? Because uh, the, the event isn't taking place until Friday, Saturday night, and you're here this morning. So uh, do, you, uh, do you live uh, local, or, or are you just in town for a little while promoting? Um, just in town. I actually live in the most boring um, state in the United <laughs> States oh. of America, and I love it. <laughs> um, I live in Edmond, Oklahoma. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. Oklahoma. Uh, yeah. I actually, I drove, I drove through the country a couple times the last year. I love driving through Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma sucks, but <laughs> I, I love, I love, I, I love it. Um, <laughs> I love how bad and how um, boring it is because I'm a very boring person. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the difference between Quinn Ojanak and Moose. Okay, <laughs> all right. Moose is very flamboyant and um, exciting, and you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Loves all the eyes and attention on him. Where 
Quinn just wants to be left alone. Nobody talks to him. Just in his little, little in his house in the middle of nowhere. What well, does Quinn do? Does Quinn, Quinn go fishing? What does Quinn do? Quinn doesn't leave his house. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh yeah. Quinn. In fact, Quinn only leaves his house to go to the gym. Okay. Yeah. There you go. And well, you're, even, you're, even grocery shopping, I get my groceries delivered to yeah. me. I I literally don't leave my house. I just looked it. up uh, Edmond, Oklahoma, <laughs> on on the internet here. What is uh, when you go grocery shopping? Do you pass the giant soda bottle with the salt straw sticking out of the top? I don't go grocery shopping. <laughs> All right. I get it delivered to me. So, yeah. I literally, away. I literally don't leave my house. And um, Ross, the guy standing behind you, um, that's why I always tell me, yeah, I don't mind doing the media talk because it gives me an opportunity to leave my house. Because <laughs> if I don't do media, yeah. I'm just going to be, leave. I will never leave my house. Yeah. Wait, do you not leave because you don't want to or because there's nothing to do there? Because um, I don't want to. I, I don't like dealing with people. Um, do you do you have some land where you got some space? Yeah, I have. Okay. I have not. I mean, I'm on half an acre, so it's not. Okay. it's not big land, but I just don't like dealing with people. Um, I think we live in this in a country world now that is scary out there. Like, yeah, with all the mass shootings and um, people sometimes are rude. I'm a very nice person, and I, I feel like sometimes people. Are, not as nice as me, so then I look at him, look at him as rude, and um, so for me not to deal with people and stay stress free, I just that's what you want, and, and your job is being surrounded by people. Yeah. I mean, that's what you do. Yeah, got any prairie dogs out there in your area? Uh, any what? Prairie dogs? Aren't they out in Oklahoma? <laughs> What's that? Prairie <laughs> dogs? They they <laughs> like they, they burrow holes underground. The they, they pop up out They're of the ground. Little, like I little thought golfers. I went. I, when See, I, was a kid, I wouldn't I know through. what it is because <laughs> I don't leave my house. <laughs> and maybe that's He's why. He's not kidding. <laughs> that's he never, kid. You never even look outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't. I'm scared. Of, I'm scared of being outside. I, I think that's what it is. I'm, I'm just scared of being outside. Like I, okay. I just like being in the safeness and stress-free got, life of You're a homebody. Home. Yeah, homebody. I, I get that. Yeah. I completely yeah, get that. My wife, my, it's so annoying. Um, my wife hates that about me. Yeah. Um, so I'm, yeah. we're actually going on vacation in the next month. And are you going to hate it or yeah. are you going to be okay? Um, I'm, I'm, I, think I'll, I think I'll be okay. okay. But we haven't been on vacation in like six years. Or so, uh. Like that's how bad it is. <laughs> like, um, but where, yeah, where are you going? Kansas? Hawaii. Hawaii. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, you picked yeah. a good You'll be all right. Oh, there's yeah, some yeah, good yeah. rooms that you can stay in there. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'm looking forward to it. I'm also scared by um, interacting with people. <laughs> uh, so. All right. Yeah. You know, it reminds me of that, that Looney Tunes character, Gosmer, the big, the big, like, yeah. hulking guy who's like, he turns to you and he goes, beep! Oh, and he goes, so running, running away. I want to ask about going to the gym because if I'm at the gym and I feel like I need to, uh, if I'm like not doing something right, I always look for somebody who looks like you. And I will go ask you your advice. Hey, is my form okay here? Or, or why are you doing this exercise? Are you okay with that type of stuff? And does it happen to you often because uh, of... Um, uh, of your stature, your size, and stuff. I, nobody talks to me in the gym. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I give that era of talk to this guy. Okay. So yeah. So, You're not uh, sending that message. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sending that message that oh that guy's a talkable guy. Hey. Uh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, he looks. He looks like a happy. First go-lucky. of all, first of all, when I go to the gym, I usually go early, so it's okay. not a lot of people in there with me. Um, I usually go to the gym between. The latest I'll go to the gym is 9 a.m. and the earliest I'll go is like 5 a.m. So okay. Okay. once I once I go there, a lot of times people are, there's not a lot of people there in the gym with me. So, you're there. Yeah. You're there to do business. I'm there yeah. to do business. I honestly, I tell people this too. Um, because wrestling is something that I love to do. Going to the gym, I. T- my job is to go to the gym. Yeah. That's okay. what I get paid to do. To go to the gym and eat right and train and wrestling is just a hobby that i do yeah so huh. i'm getting paid to go to the gym a hobby okay. you love yeah. Yeah. probably a good yeah. way to it's probably yeah. it's good to look at it that way yeah. motivates you to go and do it yeah. absolutely <laughs> All right, well, listen, Moose, we appreciate the visit. Uh, Moose is going to be uh, along with the rest of the gang from uh, TNA Impact Live Friday and Saturday night, 7 o'clock uh, each night at uh, 2300 Arena. And you can get tickets through TNA wrestling.com. It's nice to meet man. We appreciate you coming by oh, here. Thanks for having Glad me. Glad you got uh, out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I had a lot of fun with this. Um, 
chat, and hopefully I'll come back soon. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Let's hear from Moose, everybody. Yeah. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back in just a second. Please stay with us. Traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right, we have another shot of the Bizarre file, so let's go for it. Now, bizarre. WMMR presents bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre, bizarre File. Brought to you this morning by Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds since 1987. You can get free seeding every year. Hmm. Call them at 800-FREE-SEED-NOW. Um, a London, uh, actually London police said Monday that they have arrested a man on suspicion of attempted murder after two people were wounded with crossbow bolts. Whoa. In two separate attacks in the capital. What do they come out of Sherwood Forest? A manhunt was launched after a 44 year old woman was hit in the head with a crossbow bolt in a residential part of East London. Uh, and in a separate act, a... 20-year-old man was wounded in the neck by the same weapon in the same area. This means person's aiming for their head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jesus. Pretty, sir. Um, I've always wanted a crossbow. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Never, cool. I've never fired one. and I, I've uh, had compound bow. I currently have a compound bow, but a crossbow, right? Yeah, same here. I had a compound bow, but I've never huh. shot a crossbow. I think I mean, it'd be kind of fun. We could do that. Like, they're, they're right here in the good. studio. Yeah. You can get them, no problem. Uh, the uh, force said a 47-year-old man was arrested and that officers searching his home found a crossbow, knives, and other weapons. Uh, the suspect is in custody at an East London police station. Britain's government is considering tightening regulations on crossbows so that they are restricted like firearms are. Currently, anyone over 18 can legally buy a crossbow. Is the sheriff of Nottingham investigating? He is, but uh, carrying it in public without a reasonable excuse could be punishable by up to four years in prison. You sound like you're from London. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was the kind of thing you see in a heist movie or maybe a dream. A black bag stuffed with roughly $50,000 in cash discovered by volunteers tending to a placid garden in a quiet San Francisco neighborhood. Last month, a group of community garden workers unearthed a duffel bag filled with wads of wet, dis, uh, disintegrating $100 bills wrapped in red napkins. Wow. Uh, volunteers with Garden for the Environment discovered the cash. The bag of money was in a planter box underneath a row cover, which is used to protect crops uh, growing in a plant bed. F humanity, I'm out of here. Volunteers sifted through what they could of the bills and estimated the totals around 50 grand. And although some of the bills had been fused from being exposed to the elements, uh, so the cash was kind of diff difficult to count, uh, they then phoned the police. Uh, about seven officers responded to the call. Police uh, confirmed the discovery, examined the area where the bag was found, and booked the money as evidence. Uh, it's still not clear where the money came from or how it ended up in the planter box in the garden. So how long does it stay as evidence before it's able to be awarded yeah. or retrieved? I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. And when they find uh, sums of money and they deem them to be you know, legitimately missing, yeah. sometimes... They, they put like an ad in the paper or, so, or you know, right. in, in a publication and say, you have X amount of time to come by and claim this. And yeah. then the, the finder, finder's keepers, basically. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I mean, honestly, like, let's say you're just in the woods digging holes for whatever reason yeah. and you come across a bag of money. Do you have to? You technically, you should, you should yes. Yeah. But do you have but to? can you? Mm -hmm. You can keep it. Yeah. You know, Squirrel, did you see that? I didn't see anything. Um, I, I think, yes, I think you're obliged to, Case, yeah. but... Um, you ever see a simple sure. plan? Yeah. Yes. I did not have heard it's great. It's how a, interesting that is. It's a fascinating book, mm -hmm. and then they made a really good movie based on the book, and uh, Casey, that's essentially what it's about, is that people find the money, and then everything that goes wrong... It's after afterwards. a plane crash, right? It, well, yeah, and, and there's... Um, well, go yeah. see it for yourself. So, I did not know this, but there are large motorized stuffed animals that kids and parents ride through oh, some yeah. parts of the Am American Dream Mall. Yeah, sorry. That's where I was. Uh, yes, and I was thinking of you, Kathy, and they include plushy zebras, elephants, tigers, and hippos. Casey, have you done this before? No, I haven't or? done it. I've, I, I have. Yeah. They, okay. they used to have them at the Plymouth Meeting Mall. They are the funniest things you'll see, and they're just driving around the mall. Uh, so, they're, they're, they're basically like little... Vehicles? Uh, yes. Or, Jake, or are Jace, they actually like motor... What do they look like? like? It's, a giant, it. yeah. it's a giant stuffed animal. You sit on it. Like, remember the, the rocking horse that you had as a kid? Yes, yeah. It's, it's basically would remind you of that, but it's motorized, and it 
it travels through the mall and to see like the kids and the parents on them, <laughs> it looks it's hilarious. hilarious. Well, yeah. an elderly woman is suing the oh, East no. Rutherford Mega Mall <laughs> and a ride operator alleging she was struck and seriously injured by one of those oh, animals. I mean, Damn it. I mean, I guess if you're elderly, but they don't go very fast. Uh, it marks the latest legal trouble for the beleaguered retail and entertainment complex in the Meadowlands. Those legal rows range from a broken leg to slip and falls, knocked out teeth, unpaid construction bills and defaults on a multi-million dollar loan. In this particular suit, though, uh, um, Shirley, New York resident, Trinidad Javier, alleges that the mall and the operators of these rides, called Dream Riders, failed to follow the proper safety protocols that could have prevented her injury. As a result, the lawsuit says Javier sustained injuries to her spine Ooh. and had to undergo surgery. Uh, the suit alleges that the ride operator, the mall, and its owners failed to provide a specified area where mall patrons could walk uh. without danger of being struck by these rides. So, And the, the footage we watched, they were just kind of going all over the place. Yeah, and oh, a specified you, area where the rides could be operated. Yeah, You can kind of, I, there is like a little area, but at least that the American Dream Mall, the, the location where you rent them is separate from the area. So you're driving through a little, like a little bit of the mall to get yeah. to the area where you can ride around. Oh, oh, all right. It also says the defendants failed to ensure that children operating the rides were adequately supervised. So they kind of just let them run a mall. What animal hitter did they mention? Uh, no, I didn't oh, say. Yeah. I, I don't know what it was, But they, they did used to have them at the Plymouth Meeting Mall, and that's where we rode them. Huh. And they have since taken them out. Well, I want a crossbow, and I want one of those. Uh, yeah. I yeah, got a crossbow right. for you. I want, yeah. a, I want a crossbow hunt on the back of that's a That's what I'm yeah. thinking. Ooh. That's perfect. <laughs> a man was arrested Saturday after crashing a stolen tree trimming truck and a wood chipper before leading police on a chase. Michigan State Police Troopers... Received a call about a large tree trimming truck pulling... Two tree toads tied together tried to draw to town. A wood chipper being driven recklessly as troopers tried to find the truck. Dispatchers received additional 911 calls about the truck's operator driving off the road and hitting mailboxes. Several callers said that the truck had nearly struck several other vehicles head on. Police officers ended their pursuit after the truck struck a squad car. Uh, they also were told the suspect, uh, suspected truck thief was possibly armed with a handgun, had stolen another man's dog, and was under the influence of crystal meth before the police chase began. I'm a little crazy, I admit it. As they looked for the suspect and truck troopers and police learned the vehicle crashed into a tree, they also received calls that the, suspect, the suspected driver exited the truck and ran away. Uh, police called in a canine unit to find the suspect, and he was located inside a large Rubbermaid container at the rear of a nearby <laughs> residence. All right. This container is empty. Uh, police... What? Is there anybody in there? This container is empty. Let's go somewhere else. Uh, police... Anyone in there? No. This container is empty. Uh, police arrested the suspect identified as a 35-year-old man. The suspect was taken to the hospital for injuries and will be taken to the county jail once doctors clear him. Uh, during questioning, the man told investigators he had taken crystal meth and another unknown drug while driving the stolen truck. He admitted, just stop at crystal meth. He admitted to fleeing from police earlier and stealing the dog while armed, he said. There's no uh, dog in here. Uh, <laughs> he told them the dog jumped out of the vehicle at some point, and officials said they have not located the dog, so they are looking for that. And that is what I have in this morning's Bizarre File. All right, so you've been texting the secret text word. It's time now to call, and we'll see if you know it. Uh, Kathy, what number caller for secret text word? 13. Yes. Caller number 13 at 215-263-WMMR. If you know the secret text where we get those Trey Kennedy tickets for you, so give us a call right now. We'll get the random texture as well. And when we get back, we'll do lesson question trash and music news. Okay. Okay. 93.3 WMMR Jets. Are you going to be my girl? It is 15 minutes after 10. Uh, today is Wednesday morning. Listen to the Steve Show. We will be getting another letter from Jackie Bam Bam in a little while for our Word of the Week prize. We've only got three more to go. We give that away on Friday, but something else holy that we are giving away. Not holy like in, you know, yes. religious sense. W-H-O-L-Y in whole uh, is our secret text word prize. And so we are going to go to our phones. We're looking for caller number 13, and that is Ruth. And there's a biblical name for you hey. right there. Hey, Ruth. Good hey. Morning. hey, Ruth. How you doing? Great. How are you? Awesome. Ruth, <laughs> what is our... <laughs> I got you. I'll do it again here. Okay, hold on. <laughs> what is our secret text word, please? Socks. Socks, yeah. 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 That's correct, Ruth. Hang on the line.
and we're going to set you up. We're going to give you a pair of tickets to see Trey Kennedy growing up, co- grow up comedy tour Thursday, April 18th at the Grand in Wilmington, Delaware. Tickets are on sale now via the grandwilmington.org. And our random texter is Stephen Gordon from Warminster. And Stephen's going to get those tickets as well. So congratulations to you, sir. All right. Uh, we're going to do, Case, I need to do uh, Wait, no, I no, do no. the lesson yeah, question yeah. now. Yeah, what? you're right. Okay, okay. I did, thought we had the wrong elements up here, but uh, we have them correctly. So the question, the lesson question today is, how many gorillas should Mackenzie Scott consider buying? <laughs> All those billions of dollars she has. 215-263-WMMR. That was around 7 o'clock this morning. How many gorillas should Mackenzie Scott consider buying? 215-263-WMMR. If you heard that, then you probably know the answer. Let's see if you do. Give us a call now. The trash business is a gold mine. 93.3 WMMR with Preston and Steve's Hollywood Trash. All right, brought to you by Sequoia Outback. Stop in for their annual Spring and Sequoia sale going on now. Route 309 in Hatfield or at decksupplies.com. Experience the ultimate at Sequoia Outback. What's going on this morning, Steve? Well, online sleuth suggesting that Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey are on a getaway vacation on the island of Eleuthera, I think it is, in the Bahamas. To ensure their privacy, Swift is reportedly paid to have the local population exterminated. Sure. Oh, my God. MGM Resorts denying a story that Bruno Mars has a $50 million gambling debt on the books with them. Spokesman for the chain did reveal that Kathy Bates has a $30 million debt for pizza bagels. Whoa. She loves those pizza bagels. And finally, Caitlyn Jenner <clears throat> Excuse me, and Lamar Odom reuniting for a project, a sports podcast called Keeping Up with Sports. Caitlin says, if you love sports, then she and Lamar are deeply sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> All right, let's see if you can get the answer correct. Uh, what? How many gorillas should Mackenzie Scott consider buying? 215-263-WMMR. Uh, it's Jim that we will go to. Hi there, Jim. Hello. All right, Jim, how many gorillas should McKenzie Scott buy, please? A <laughs> hundred gorillas. A hundred gorillas. gorillas. Jimmy. Yeah, hang on, Jimmy. We're going to set you up, but we are going to give you, uh, what are we giving him? Oh, yeah, a pair of tickets to the theatrical premiere of Hate to Love, Nickelback. Come to select cinemas for two nights, only March 27th and 30th. Hate to Love, Nickelback tells the authentic story about the band from their humble beginnings in Hannah, Alberta, to their explosive global success in 2001 and the highs and lows that followed for tickets, visit NickelbackFilm.com. Another chance to win tickets at WMMR.com. All right, music. Now, Preston and Steve's Music News on 93.3 WMMR. Brought to you by Dermatology Associates of Plymouth Meeting. Ooh, how do I look? Uh, Recruiting... (laughs) For a non-segmental vitiligo study to test and investigate medication adults. Uh, medication adults 18 and older can register. Uh, go to Plymouth Meeting Dermatology.com. Uh, the pretenders are going to tour the United States this summer, and they will be stopping through Philadelphia. Uh, they are going to be performing at the Fillmore on July 14th. Uh, tickets will go on sale starting on Friday. And in between the headlining shows, they've scattered opening dates for Foo Fighters. Uh, and several of those shows are sold out at this point. Uh, so the Met, uh, I'm sorry, not the Met, the Fillmore. The Fillmore, the, yeah. July 14th. I, I saw the Pretenders in concert and they are, they're awesome. Yeah. I, I just wish she was a little happier. <laughs> yeah. She's yeah. not a, Chrissy Hind is not a very happy person. All right. Uh, officially <clears throat> out now is the all-star version of Martin Knopfler's Going Home, theme from Local Hero, which is uh, raising money for the UK's uh, Teenage Cancer Trust. We were just talking about that yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I love this album. He did the soundtrack, the original soundtrack for the movie, which is a delightful comedy. Uh, really, uh, you know, a Celtic sort of feel to it. But th- the music for that movie is sensational. So it was co-founded by The Who's Roger Daltrey and uh, the latter, uh, the um, Teen Cancer America, was found by uh, Pete Townsend. Uh, the nearly 10-minute rendition includes, <clears throat> excuse me, contrib- contributions from a who's who of guitarists and vocalists, including Pete Townsend, 
uh, Eric Clapton, Brian May, Bruce Springsteen, Nile Rodgers, David Gilmore, Joan Jett, Joe Walsh, Tony Iommi, and more. So for the longest time, they would close out their <laughs> concerts, uh, Dire Straits, with Going Home. And this, a big, <coughs> you know, uh, um, a long, it sounds like this. Uh, Daltrey contributed harmonica while Ringo Starr and his son Zach both played drums and Sting joined on bass. Artwork was designed by Sir Peter Blake, known for his iconic work with the Beatles, The Who, Band-Aid, and more. Former Dire Straits keyboardist and a continuing Knopfler associate Guy Fletcher produced the track, which has been in the works for more than a year. And Jeff Beck is on it. And his uh, contribution is thought to be the last thing he recorded before he died wow. in January 2023. Did so, you ever see the movie? Uh, Peter Regard from uh, Animal House is in it and uh, Burt Lancaster. Who's, yeah. Which one is Peter Regard? Uh, oh, Boone? Boone, Boone. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I never did see it. What's yeah. it about? Uh, there's an oil company that's going to, they're looking to get drilling rights. It's a, it's a small Irish town and uh, he becomes enamored of the local populace and it's it's sweet. It's, okay. it's a, you know, very touching but funny movie. Uh, the song is available on all streaming services and has been released physically on CD. And one last thing, and I think we have a couple of clips to this. John Mellencamp yeah. uh, had called out an audience member for heckling at one of his recent shows and urged them to meet him after the show. <laughs> uh, he had issues with heckles in the past. Last March, he threatened to end his show in Texas after it happened and then again in Cleveland uh, two months later. This happened in Toledo on Sunday, and he actually did leave. Yes, he, he did. He's he, he said, I'm, I've had it. I'm out of here. And we'll play. Uh, there are three clips. Yeah, this is uh, the progression. This is when he first gets uh, interrupted. Yeah. He's trying to tell a story. And uh, and the guy says something like, play more music. Yeah. Which is a stupid thing to say. Mm -hmm. And she went, it's just like you, buddy, to be a smart aleck. And then it got real quiet. So, yeah, John's, he, listen, he's 72 years old. He's just kind of telling a little story. He's kind of taking his time, and this dude yeah. butts in. Uh, By the then, way, uh, his concerts are routinely beginning to end oh, hits. Yeah. You know them all. Mm -hmm. yeah. one, of my, one of my favorite concert experiences was seeing Mellencamp play live. Agreed. And so this is him. Uh, he's, he tries, and this guy yeah. jumps in again while he's talking. Yeah, here's the thing, man. You don't know me. Hey, Joe, find this guy and let me see him after the show. Yeah. Before I was so rudely interrupted. Um, guys, I can stop this show right now and just go on. And then he 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 has it. And he, he's like, that's yeah, it. He and, starts to go into Jack and Diane and Yeah, here you go. Tell you what I'm gonna do. Since you've been so wonderful, I'm gonna cut about ten songs out of the show. Here we go. Over. Yeah, he plays it. He plays that hook, and then he said, "That's it." And was that it? That was, that was it. it. No, he no, left. no. No, he came back. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah. He came back uh, after. So uh, they found that guy that they wanted tossed out. He came back and he did a few more songs. Oh, he didn't do the phone. Oh, you're right. It says, okay, Nick, I missed this last part in the story. He said he left the stage. The house lights went up. He eventually returned to the stage and performed a few more songs to close off the night. Yeah. I mean, okay. look, he can be cranky, and I get it. Um, oh, yeah, he can. But, uh, you know, yelling out authority song when he's in the middle of an acoustic set, you're just an idiot. You're asking for the artist to be mad at you by doing crap yeah, like that. Yeah, totally. I agree. All right, and that is what I have in music news for you. We have one more break to take, and we're doing that now. We'll come back in a second, wrap the thing up, letter of day, word of the week, when we get back. So please hang out. And they 93.3 WMMR, Nickelback. On the President Steve Show, we're actually going to have a member of Nickelback joining us, uh, Mike Kroger. 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 We were just having this discussion in the other room. I always thought it was Chad Kroger and, and Mike Kroger. Nope, oh. it's Kroger. He okay. himself had um, specified the way to, but he says he does it. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyhow, Chad's brother, right, or cousin. Am I wrong about that? <laughs> I don't even know, actually. Okay. Chud. Somebody from the band Nickelback yes. will be joining us on Friday. Nickelback. Nipple, I'm sorry. I've apparently destroyed this entire thing. Uh, but uh, it's in conjunction with this uh, movie that's coming out that we've been giving ticks to. So, yeah, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll, talk to, uh, we'll talk to somebody on Friday. <laughs> the mic. 
mic yeah. on Friday. Can we have, Hi, that, can we have the, audio, the audio of Kathy doing the nipple back tickets? Yeah. Nipple back tickets. It's one of my all-time favorites. That's a good one. <laughs> Give me a second. All right. I would like to thank our guests. We had the CEO of the Battleship New Jersey, Marshall Spivak, yes. on. Yes. Big doings. I'm sorry, Spivak. <laughs> uh, and he will be actually uh, tomorrow. The the USS New Jersey is headed to uh, to dry dock uh, to do some refurbishing on the bottom part. It's going to be uh, stowed away for a couple of months, and so they're doing a big deal tomorrow. There's going to be the governor's going to be there. Uh, there will be uh, music and food and and drinks and all this stuff. And they're expecting you know thousands of people to show up. It, it this is. Uh, for a lot of people, it's not going to happen again in their lifetime. No, so to no. see this this awesome piece of machinery move down the the river is pretty cool. Underway, yeah, it, it is very cool, and uh, you'll honestly you'll have the opportunity to walk beneath the ship and look under the you know once they dry dock yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you'll be able to uh, to schedule uh, tours so cool, yeah, and, yeah. and see what lies beneath the water because there's uh, it, it's a pretty impressive. Um, uh, uh, craft and and to see that is uh, is awesome and very rare. So we thank uh, Marshall for coming on. And then from TNA Wrestling, we had Moose. Yeah. Moose. Moose was on the show. He was a nice guy. He man. was so funny talking about what a what an introvert and a and a not a people person. A shut just, in, yeah, he's a total shut in. But uh, yeah, he is performing uh, with the rest of the gang uh, Friday and Saturday night. Friday and Saturday night at twenty three hundred Arena. Tickets available at TNAWrestling.com, by the way. So, so if anybody knows me, call in. You got your nipple back tickets. <laughs> <laughs> it's from the very first drunk day. <laughs> Kathy and her nipple back. Uh, Jackie Bam Bam's here. Hey, man. Right after Nickelback, you bring me in. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> good You're not one. a Nickelback fan? I am a Nickelback you fan. Are. Yeah. You're like, what do you... Is there anything you don't like music I, I like all kinds of you music. You do. You yeah. do. Yeah. There's good music and bad music, and music has no expiration date. And Nickelback, yeah, they take a beating, just like Creed did. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like uh, Greta Van Fleet uh, takes it today, and Kingdom Come took it in the 80s. Oh, wow. Right? Got, yeah. The same kind of vibe. That's funny. Yeah. So yeah. that's good. You got them, uh, well, one of the guys on your show for our Yeah, yeah somebody. Well, that's great. No, Judge Spivak. Uh, Mike Kruger. Yeah, Kruger, Kruger, correct. Kruger, yeah, we were Kruger. in the uh, office, in Chuck's office down the hallway, and Casey Boy was saying it wrong, and he corrected him. Okay. All right, so now it. we know, and no one's half the battle. Battleship in New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling Chuck we should do like an after party at the MM barbecue, but like you said, it won't be there. So yeah, so we can we can bring our own battleship. <laughs> well, no, wait a minute. So it's only going to be gone for a couple of months. Oh, maybe. So we by can, the time MM barbecue comes back around, it should still be yeah, there. That's right. It's you know, after we get done the MM barbecue, Pierre is doing the after thing. I could just march over there and we could continue the party. Yeah, it's a great idea. Fire yeah, those guns. It. And you have to uh, really, well, me when you go to the bathroom in the battleship, you have to duck. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jackie's yeah. very tall. Yes. And uh, you'll hit. Your I head. love it though. It is cool. Do you actually go into the bathrooms, or are you just doing the uh, hallways? I was taking the tour, Steve. <laughs> All right, so shall we do the letter? We shall. All right. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Now, the daily letter. All right, and the Preston and Steve show is brought to you today by the letter. The letter Z, as in zebra. All right, and we are going to give away our prize on Friday. A pair of pit tickets and concert T-shirts for MMRBQ. Saturday, September 24th at Freedom Mortgage Pavilion. The tickets are on sale now via Ticketmaster, including the early bird lawn ticket special, $25 plus fees while supplies last. So get them now, friend. You got some stuff planned for today, Jackie? I do. Uh, the workforce blocks today on the docket. What do we have? Our patron St. Peter Gabriel throwing a little Genesis solo, Pete. Uh, it's a heavenly happy birthday to Chester Bennington. Uh, we'll acknowledge that. Big block of Lincoln Park. And we'll up the irons with Maiden. Uh, we have Fogarty <laughs> tickets, Thurgood tickets, and... Those very cool VIP uh, sit and sweet with me and my boy over there, Casey Boy, April 28th. Uh, we're heading to the Dover Motor Speedway. Love awesome. It. All right, Jack, he's got a bunch today. I want to thank our sponsors, Preston and Steve Show, brought to you today by Duncan. The Preston and Steve Show runs on Duncan. Also, Acme Markets, fresh foods, local flavors, and brought to you by A.D. Moyer, your professional source for decks, windows, doors, millwork, and more. A.D. Moyer.com. Uh, tomorrow, we're working on some stuff, so I, I think we should probably do a contest. Yes. I think so. Yes. So we got, we got product to, to move. We'll do that, and we'll find out what else we can get into. That's it. We're done. Rage on, and have a great day. Of course, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.